everybody. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, and we're set for the kickoff. It will be John Smith of the, of the New England Patriots kicking off to either Kurt Sohn or Johnny Lamb Jones of the New York Jets as the Jets won the toss. A gorgeous afternoon. The temperature in the 60s and the sun is shining. Lamb Jones fumbles it back into the end zone, and then he makes the mistake and decides to run it out and will be dropped to the two-yard line. Since he did not have possession, he could have recovered it in the end zone and had the ball at the 20. Ken Toller down very quickly for the Patriots, so the Jets go to work offensively following a kickoff mistake by Johnny Lamb Jones. Let's look at the offense of the New York Jets. Richard Todd is the quarterback. They are hurting at running backs. It will be Bruce Harper and Mike Augustiniak, but Augustiniak has an ankle injury. Only Bruce Harper, in reality, of the seven running backs, is in good health. The receivers, Wesley Walker, who has been having an outstanding last couple of ball games. Derek Gaffney will start on the other side, and Jerome Barkham is the tight end. They show motion out of the backfield. That is Gaffney. The give is to Bruce Harper. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and not that much more. Bill Matthews is there as we look to the offensive line of the Jets. It's intact of Chris Ward, Randy Rasmussen, Joe Fields, Dan Alexander, and Marvin Powell. Defensively, the New England Patriots will show a basic 3-4 lineup. And that front three is aging. It is Tony McGee, Richard Bishop, and Julius Adams, and they are all over 30 years of age. Second down and 10. They mark it for no gain. And so Richard Todd faces a passing situation early in the ballgame in his own territory, but he gives instead to Augie Augustinian. And he comes out to the nine-yard line. He'll pick up six, so it'll be third down and around four as Bill Matthews and Rod Schoet bring him down at that point. That front three for the New England Patriots, Tony McGee, Richard Bishop, and Julius Adams. The four linebackers, Mike Hawkins, Bob Golick, Bill Matthews, and Rod Schoet. And the secondary, they are all number one draft choices, and they are second in the AFC in pass defense. Claiborne, Haynes, Sanford, and Fox. And that secondary is a very good secondary, Charlie. And right now, New York Jets are faced with a passing situation. And they better get things moving because they're running down on the 25. 30 second clock, they're going to have to call timeout. So two early mistakes against the Jets. The first, the, the muff is it officially called by Lamb Jones on about the two yard line, the ball into the end zone. He would have down at that point. He could have come out to the 20 yard line. And now they take, what are we, a minute and a half into the ballgame, they take the first of three timeouts. So we'll go away for a moment. We have no score. Early in the ballgame, we'll be back in a moment. Turn on today, weekday mornings, and wake up to what's happening. All right, this is Charlie Jones and Lynn Dawson. We thought we were going away for a commercial break, but surprise of surprises, we're back here at Shea Stadium. Charlie, you mentioned something about Lamb Jones making a, really a crucial mistake early in the ball game. And that is not downing the ball in the end zone, putting it on the 20 yard line. They back themselves up right now. If the Patriots should stop them, then they should be in excellent field position. And for the Patriots, what they want to do is keep that defense off the field. They want they want field position for the Jets like they are right now, where they've got a long way to go. And the play selection is limited when you're about one or two yards away from your goal line. But right now it looks like Todd is in a passing situation because he needs at least three yards more more like four yards to go to pick up the first down and the Patriots will come with a four man rush as Ray Hamilton is in the front line defensively Bruce Harper and Tom Newton are now the two running backs going after him. Todd's pass is incomplete Wesley Walker the intended receiver and Ray Claiborne had the coverage and that means that Chuck Ramsey will come on to kick for the Jets and the Patriots would have excellent field position. Ron Earhart said they were going to have a few new wrinkles and things they're going to do defensively. And, and right now you're looking at number 28 or 48. That is the free safety Fox going on the safety blitz, meaning that there is man to man coverage in the secondary. Claiborne had to guard his man all over the field. If he'd have broken loose and caught the pass, it could have been a long, long touchdown. And there's not that much wind in Shea Stadium this afternoon as Mike Haynes is set for the return of the punt of Chuck Ramsey. Not that good a kick. 
but takes a New York Jet bounce and will go out of bounds at the New England 49 yard line. So the Patriots take over following that kick of 41 yards. They'll have a first down, and now we'll try once again to take our timeout. We have no score. We're early in the ball game at Shea Stadium, so stay with us this afternoon. Behind every schlitz is a man who knows his beer. Down here in Texas, people know a good beer, and many choose the taste of my schlitz. Just one glass will tell a lot of beer drinkers what I've known all along. You just can't buy a better tasting beer than Schlitz. What do I really think? I think Schlitz tastes better than Miller. Schlitz tastes really smooth. Mr. Selinger, your Schlitz tastes good. It really does. I'm glad you like it. Behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. At J.C. Penney Auto Centers, we won't steer you wrong. We will steer you to the amazing J.C. Penney Mileage Maker XP All-Season Steel Belted Radio for great traction in any road conditions. And right now, save $28 to $68 on a set of four. The Mileage Maker XP with the unique interlock block tread. Season in, season out. The only tire you need, only at J.C. Penney. J.C. Penney Auto Centers. Let's take a look at the offensive set of the New England Patriots. Mike, uh, Matt Cavanaugh, quarterback with the rookie Tony Collins and Don Callahan, the two running backs. Stanley Morgan and Harold Jackson are the wide receivers. And Hasselbeck is the tight end. And there is the offensive line of Wheeler, Hannah, Brock, Kreider, and Jordan. I think you said Callahan. It's Calhoun out I'm of K-State. Sorry, K -State. Sorry. Don Calhoun. That's a man. And he gets the call. They had spotted at the 50-yard line, and he'll pick up two, maybe three yards where Stan Blinka makes the tackle. So let's look now to the defense of the New York Jets, basically in a 4-3 with Gastineau, Salam, Lyons, and Clicko up front. The linebackers, Greg Buttle, Stan Blinka, and Lance Mel. Quite a story on Mel last week with uh, changes at corners, Jerry Holmes and Donald Dykes, Ken Troy and Daryl Ray at the safety spots. And now, Mosi Tatupu comes in. Calhoun comes out. Offensively, second down and eight. Kavanaugh's pass is complete. Bouncing off of would-be tacklers is the rookie running back, Tony Collins. And Lance Mel finally brings him down. Mel, number 56, last week before the game in the locker room, the big locker slipped off. It fell on his foot. He had to have five stitches in his big toe. Didn't bother him at all. Went out and played Charlie, very that, well. That's when things are going bad. <laughs> when you're getting hurt in the locker room before you even get out on the field. 44 yard line so it's third down and four Andy Johnson comes in so he and Collins are the two setbacks Johnny Lynn comes into the secondary for the Jets they have five men to throw against Johnson an excellent receiver out of the backfield also he can throw on the option scramble by Kavanaugh has the first down He's learning, hits for the sideline. Yeah, he better learn not to slow up when he gets near the sideline, though, Charlie. He did slow up once he got the first down, but I found uh, a long time ago that you don't stop just because there's a white line there at the sideline. You keep going four or five yards past that line to make sure someone doesn't take a cheap shot at you. But you're taking a look right now. John Hanna, 73, considered the best off of offensive lineman in the league and here you uh, look at the secondary and they're all getting depth underneath is a receiver coming underneath almost running into one of his own men now they see the scramble and now it's the uh, job of the receivers to turn up field and turn into a blocker try to get in somebody's way first down fake of the reverse they wanted to throw a delayed screen and now he throws it away good play by Kavanaugh excellent play he would have taken about a 15 yard loss had he not gotten rid of that football. They fake on the reverse, and then they want to throw the screen to Stanley Morgan. Well, uh, the head coach Earhart said they're going to have a few new razzle-dazzles, and this is about as razzly and a dazzly as you can get, but unfortunately, the Jets read it very well. Kavanaugh is quick on his feet. He was able to escape the defensive lineman, Mark Gastineau, threw the ball away. Saved about 15 yards. So it's the 33-yard line of the Jets, second down and 10. Kavanaugh's pass is complete tight end Hasselbeck has it is hit and down at the 22 yard line 
Stan Blinko was there. They'll mark the ball dead at around the 23. And they'll bring it back to spot it because it is in the neighborhood of the first down. Taking a look at first quarter score, New Orleans leading Philadelphia 7 to nothing. George Rogers, uh, five yard run for the score, and Philadelphia is the only unbeaten, untied team in the National Football League. Taking a look at the head coach of the Jets, Walt Michaels. Very concerned right now because even if they don't have a first down, they're definitely in field goal range. And they've got the first. So a pair of first downs in the drive for the New England Patriots that started at the 50 yard line. Patriots really they haven't had problems offensively. It's been defense. It's been a problem. They've been giving up almost 220 yards per game rushing. That means the other team has the football. They're maintaining possession of the football and the offense is on the sideline. It's a first down New England. No score. 11 05 left to go. We're in the first quarter at Shea Stadium. Tony Collins. We'll mark it for no gain as Gastino and Salam are both there. It'll be second down and 10. And once, once again, getting into a situation where Kavanaugh is going to have to go to the air, see some more substitutions coming in for the New England Patriots. Vegas Ferguson coming into the ball game. Mosi Tatupu. Tatupu in also. One of the defensive uh, linemen in the National Football League, Los Angeles, out in front of Atlanta, seven. I think said that bringing down Tatupu was like tackling a soft drink machine. <laughs> Reverse. Reverse. Harold Jackson. Excellent read by the defense. The flag is down. Lance Mel, the outside linebacker on the right side, made the tackle. And now we'll check out the flag. I might be going against the uh, New England Patriots. Offensive holding. A loss of about five yards on the play, so it would be third and 15 or second and 20. But as you mentioned a moment ago, field goal range becomes crucial in this offensive thrust by the New England Patriots. They may refuse this penalty. The Patriots are looking to go with three wide receivers. Illegal block above the waist from the rear. 58 offense is the climb. It's third down. The call on Pete Brock, the center. It'll be third and 15. They wanted to take that down away from him. They lost about five downs on the play, so did not want to give them two downs to pick up additional yardage. Hasselbeck in motion from the shotgun. And the first sack of the ball game. And the 18th on the year for the Jets. And it is Joe Klecko who got it. Klecko now has five and a half on the year, and that means that he keeps his string intact of being involved in a sack in every ball game. You would know that he was injured. He's got a foot and an ankle injury. As you can see, Joe Klecko going off the field rather slowly. Coming back, passing situation. The Jets know it. And you can see Klecko just sheds the blocker, Dwight Wheeler, number 62, and gets to the quarterback. Now they were in field goal range. Now they're back punting the football. Ken Hartley, the new punter for New England, hits on the 10 and goes into the end zone for the touchback. Will bring it out to the 20-yard line where the Jets will be moving on offense. We have nine minutes and 45 seconds. Time remaining in the first quarter, and we have no score between New England and the Jets following that 37-yard kick. We'll be back in a moment. Let's talk about prices, and let's talk about interest rates. The average buyer, I need to tell this group, has literally been jolted by the so-called, one of you guys coined it, I guess, sticker shock when he walks into a new car showroom. We're going to try today to declare war on sticker shock. We will hold the price line on Omni Horizon Miser and Custom models, and we will hold the line on the base prices of all of our low-end Aries Reliant two-door and four-door models. We're really proud of the new products we're bringing out. Food, clothes, just about everything seems to cost more today. One reason young families think they can't afford life insurance. Allstate update, lower life insurance rates. 
Now, all states cut prices up to 20% on a lot of their life insurance. Like this $100,000 level term policy that now only costs a 28-year-old father about $19 a month. Before you buy, come in and compare. For life, home, or auto, you're in good hands with Allstate. Premiering Saturday, October 24th, it's the Nashville Palace for music and comedy. Only the best play the palace on NBC. Joe Klecko, at age 27, one of the premier defensive ends in the National Football League. Charlie, I was mentioning about the the L.A. Atlanta score. The L.A. leads seven to nothing. Leroy Irving, 75-yard punt return. I think that's the second one they've had this year. And they didn't have one prior to this year since Dick Bass did it 20 years ago. Tried to throw on first down swing, right side to Bruce Harper. Harper is running room near the 40-yard line before Bill Matthews brings him down. A quick pickup of 20 yards on the play and a first down. Screen pass, excellent blocking by the offensive lineman out in front of Bruce Harper, and that's what the Jets would like to do. Get this little guy out in front with a blocker or two and make those linebackers and defensive backs come up with a tackle. He's the fastest man on this New York Jet football team. And the second fastest man is Mark Gastido, the defensive end. That's not, shouldn't be permitted. He's under 4-6 in the fourth. Todd's complete. Wesley Walker. And Walker picks up 19. New England 41-yard line. First down. Bob Golick makes the tackle, and Bill Matthews was also there. I'd said in the pregame show that what the Jets would like to do would run against this Patriot team because they're giving up over 200 yards a game rushing but they don't have that many healthy backs and so what they're doing they're utilizing Harper getting the ball to him on screen passes but they're going to throw that ball downfield to those great wide receivers the strongest defense defensive unit for the Patriots is their secondary that is three in a row this time to Jerome Barkham the tight end Rick Sanford had the coverage 35 yard line a gain of six second down and four they are doing what they've been doing so very well the last couple of weeks. Richard Todd has passed for over 300 yards. The last two ball games, seven touchdown passes. So if you're doing something well, continue to do it. Don't stop just for the sake of stopping and trying something new. It was first Harper, then Walker, then Barkham. And this year, Todd has thrown to a total of 13 different receivers. Augustiniak. He keeps burrowing his way, trying to pick up the first down. He needed four. Mike Hawkins and Tony McGee were there to stop him. Rod Schott also in on the play defensively. Mike Augustiniak. Free agent. They'll bring the chains out about a yard shy. Todd has completed three of four for 42 yards thus far. Charlie, you notice a lot of their backs are around the same size. Now, he's 5'11 and 220 pounds. Freeman McNeil, their number one draft choice, 5'11, 225 pounds. And with great speed and with that type of bulk and size, it's very difficult to bring them down as they are running very close to the ground. Steve King in on defense, offensively for the Jets. Steve Stevens comes in as the second tight end. Three running backs are Scott Durking, Tom Newton, and Kevin Long. And Long becomes the key man in the short yardage situation with Newton as the blocker off on the right side. They give instead to Durking with Long leading the way, and he's got the first down. Picked up seven yards to the 25. Third first down in this drive for the New York Jets. Ray Claiborne, defensive left cornerback, makes the tackle. Scott Durkin coming into the ball game is uh, having some injury problems but he had some excellent blocking and there's a fine hole right there as you can see when he ran right through it picking up some excellent yardage and he leaves the ball game right now to the sidelines. They will spot uh, use Scott Durkin. He's got a thigh injury and a running back is going to get a hit on his legs all day if he's in there for any length of time. Quick screen. Wesley Walker. 
A gain of one is Mike Haynes diagnosed the strategy. It'll be second down and nine at the 24 yard line. It's talking about the cornerbacks of the New England Patriots. They were in fact you said all four of the secondary number one draft choices and you got a pretty good example right there why they are because Mike Haynes had Wesley Walker and Wesley was putting all the moves that he knew in his yeah. repertoire but Mike was not going to go for it and stopped him right near the line of scrimmage for about a half a yard game. In addition to the four starters Roland James one of the backup safeties also a number one draft choice four three defensive set second and nine. Todd usually throws in this situation. He splits his he's back. He's checking off. You can see right now he's checking the play. Five receivers are out. Drills this one on target to Bruce Harper. 12 yard line. First down. Mike Haynes and Rod Schott were there for the defense. That was an excellent catch by Bruce Harper because the ball was thrown behind him. But he concentrated on that football and made sure first things first. And you see so many backs don't do that. They're thinking about running. He checked this, this playoff at the line of scrimmage. You can see number 65, Joe Fields, coming back to give protection. The ball is thrown behind, but he makes a fine reception and a first down for the New York Jets. 12-yard line. Todd, now five of six. The last five in a row. A total of 55 yards through the air for Richard. First down, 12-yard line. So you look Todd turns around. He knows he had him for you a quick do six. Not, you don't get that many opportunities when you have a man wide open. And sometimes you can look at Barkham smiling coming back, knowing that all he had to do is get the ball too many. It would have been six, six points. Barkham, the tight end, is going to the right side of the, the end zone. You can see right there he's wide open. The ball thrown way behind him. For the Patriots, they can say, thank you very much, Richard. You haven't done that lately. But we appreciate it. That would have been a touchdown. They can also thank Mike Hawkins, who was <laughs> jumping up and down in his face at the time. Second and 10, 12 yard line of New England. No score. 4.53 left to go, first quarter. Todd to throw. Same spot, and it's incomplete. This time going to Walker, who slipped. Ray Claiborne had the coverage on it. So it's third down. And 10. You know, sometimes in the past, the Jets have thrown, Todd's thrown passes, and They'd be bouncing off the players and couldn't catch it. The last couple of weeks, uh, even though I know that there's no stick them out there because that's against the rules, the Jets have been making some fantastic catches. Harper made a very nice one here just a couple of plays ago. That time, I'm sure that Walker would have had an excellent chance to catch the football, but he slipped because of the turf down. Bruce Harper and Tom Newton, the setbacks. The New England Patriots, the four-man front and five in the secondary. Two linebackers, third and ten, 12-yard line. And the Patriots are there looking like they're going to be coming with everybody. And a flag is dropped. Too much time. Violation of the 32nd clock. So that is now three mistakes that the Jets have made in the first quarter. One by Lamb Jones, another a team mistake when they had some confusion, had to take a timeout way, way too soon in the first half. They now have only two remaining in here. Charlie, I might make a, a note. There were 11 people up off, on and near that line of scrimmage. Richard Todd was looking, and he probably wanted to check off. He might have had a play called where he couldn't. So rather than call timeout, he might have taken the five yards. Now, that is a possibility. I don't know if that's the case, but I know that the last time that and the, the, the Patriots are up there again. You take a look at all 11 people are up close to the line of scrimmage. But it doesn't affect field goal range. Flag is down. Markham makes the catch in the end zone. Let's see if it'll stand up. Todd was decked right after he made the release. He was nailed by uh, Mike Hawkins, number 59 of the Patriots, as he released the football. It'll go against the Patriots. Holding, of course, refused. An 80-yard drive. It took just over five minutes. Here's another look. A lot of pushing and shoving down there, but that was an excellent reception by Markham right off his fingertips. As I said just a minute ago, sometimes the ball bounces off of the shoulder pads of players, and other times... No matter what you throw up out there, your men come up with the football. That's the case the last couple of weeks for the Jets.
extra point by Pat Leahy is good. And so the New York Jets are out in front of the New England Patriots by a score of 7 to nothing, with 4.44 left to go in the first quarter. What's the Midas touch? It's using specially coated steel. To help our mufflers last. It's putting in a louver tube. To help your engine run easy. It's having a tuning chamber. To help your car run quietly. It's manufacturing our own mufflers. For over 25 years. And it's standing behind them. In writing. It's getting the right mufflers at the right price. Get the Midas touch. Nobody else has it. Oh, yeah. Behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. The people in St. Louis know their beer, but as a master brewer... Schlitz, sir. Thank you. I know one taste of my Schlitz can change a lot of minds, and now more people know. I like Schlitz better than Bud. I'm a Miller drinker, but you have to taste Schlitz to believe it. Mr. Sillinger, your Schlitz tastes good. It's a good-tasting beer. Here's to it. Behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. Pat Leahy, who added the extra point, will be kicking off, and the deep back is the rookie Tony Collins, taken in the second round of the draft from East Carolina at 5'11", 202 pounds. Fourth in rushing in the AFC this year. And he takes it over his shoulder, four yards deep, and he decides to run it out. And that will cost them about three yards. He gets to the 17. He would have downed it. He would have gotten to the 20, and Johnny Lynn makes the tackle. That's youth for you. You know, take the exuberance it. of youth, you can run it all the way. Another right? thought. See, when you start bringing it out, then you're going to take a chance also that uh, somebody's going to be using their hands illegally or, or clipping, and you go further back. You're better off when you hesitate like that, down it, take over on the 20-yard line. Because you can march 80 yards because the Jets just did it on that last drive. 80-yard drive in 10 plays. It took five minutes plus a second. So the Patriots need to get an offensive surge underway right now. Collins gets the call. From the 17 to the 23, he has six. It'll be second and four. Greg Buttle makes the tackle. Six-yard gain is an excellent gain, and that's the reason you can do that is because up front, they have some outstanding people with that, that Patriot offensive line, particularly 73, John Hanna. We'll be watching John Hanna during the course of this afternoon to see why people say he is the best in the National Football League. Collins again gets the call. Good move to the 40-yard line. So he picks up a quick 17 and a first down. Now for an update, let's join Brian Gumbel. Okay, Chaz, out at Arrowhead Stadium, the AFC's leading scorer has put the Chiefs on the board. Nick Lowry doing the honors, right-footed from 52 yards out. It's as long as any field goal in the AFC this year. Chiefs lead the Raiders 3-0. Charlie? Thank you, Brian. 52 yards, he said. Nick Lowry. Lowry is leading the uh, leading the conference, and I think... Strong the... wind on the prairies. <laughs> Might have had a gale there at Arrowhead. <laughs> Vegas Ferguson. And he will pick up about three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. Last week, Ferguson had his first carry of the year. He's been bothered by some injuries the first part of the season. And he is a, he's a very, very fine back. Oh, yes. I can see what Earhart is, is doing when he was talking to you before the ball game, Charlie. That he wants to maintain that ball on the ground to keep that defense off. Steve Honestly. Grogan, number 14 in a role that he does not like. I know that being the competitor that he is, he wants to play. Four men in the secondary, five men in the secondary, rather. The pass is complete out of the backfield to Collins. He reverses at the 40, 37-yard line of New York. So the offense has been Tony Collins, both on the ground and as a receiver. Excellent throw by Matt Cavanaugh, and he just got rid of it in time because he was getting some heat from his outside. Now getting the ball out to his receiver. See, you can see right now defensive man coming in, but a fine throw catches it on the dead run and gets by the linebacker. Now he's going to try to make a move upfield, and he will and make some additional yardage, but once again it's a first down, and they are moving the football. A gain of 20 yards on the play. Blinka and Mel both blitzing. First down. Collins. Joe Coleco. 
Gain of one, second and nine. I thought he had a bad foot and a bad ankle, but he's been moving around out there like a... But a great attitude. <laughs> That's right. Shows you the quickness of these big men. You were talking about Mark Gastineau running a 40-yard dash at 280 pounds in less than 4.6 seconds. Right. I'm glad I'm retired. In my second life, I want his body <laughs> when I come back. <laughs> second down and nine. Kevin ought to throw. Deep over the middle, has a man, and he hits him right on the numbers. It's Harold Jackson. Jackson to the 10-yard line. 26 yards on the play. Ken Shroy makes the tackle. Now the Patriots, you will recall, started this drive at their 17. And they have been picking the defense of the Jets apart. Credit that offensive line with an outstanding job of pass blocking because Kavanaugh went back in that pocket and he had an opportunity to... Now, you look right there. He can see. Nobody's bothering his vision. Nobody hey, has a hand up oh, in his God. face. Go and he there. can step and he can throw and he had Harold Jackson wide open. Gave Harold Jackson an opportunity to go downfield, maneuver around, and find the open spot. The offensive line made that play work. Kavanaugh has hit four of five for 59 yards through the air. Ferguson. Lance Bell makes the tackle. Six-yard line. Gain of about five. It'll be second down and five. Offensively, the New England Patriots are using their backs in a similar fashion to the New York Jets. They keep rotating the backs in and out. Now it is Tatupu and Collins in the backfield. It is a different area down near the goal line. It takes a different type of back. You want a back that has that is strong, that runs straight ahead very, very well, and look out. That's, That's the, the end, end of the quarter. End of the first quarter. So after one quarter, it's the New York Jets seven, the New England Patriots nothing, but they threaten. We'll be back to see if they score in just a moment. Nowadays, there are all sorts of ways of saving and investing money that help fight inflation. The problem is finding the one that's most profitable for you, because now you're forced to swim through all kinds of confusing details. Maturity dates, minimum deposits, interest rates, even tax benefits. But there is a way to escape all this confusion. It's by calling or visiting your full-service bank. For professional guidance with high-yield savings, it's all the bank you'll ever need. Introducing America's highest mileage six-passenger driving machine, the 1982 Dodge Aries K, with improved engine performance for even better mileage than last year. With front-wheel drive, rack and pinion steering, and improved suspension for even better ride and performance than last year. With so much that's new and exciting, the most incredible news for 82 is what isn't new. The price, still America's lowest-priced, highest mileage six-passenger front-wheel drive car, the 1980 Aries K Coupe, America's driving machine. This is Brian Gumble in New York. Out at Three Rivers Stadium, the Steelers have capped off a 97-yard drive with this scoring toss of nine yards. Brad shot a stalwart, moved the Steelers ahead of the Browns 7-0. Let's go back to Shea. All right, thank you, Brian, for that update. As we start the second quarter here, it is the Jets 7 and the New England Patriots nothing. Second down and five at the New York Jets six-yard line. And so many times in the National Football League after one team scores, the other team comes right back with a strong drive. The Patriots started this at their 17-yard line, and this is the eighth play of the drive. Tony Collins. Good defensive play. Lance Bell drops Collins for a loss of a couple of yards. And it was an excellent play because now the situation is that Kavanaugh is going to have to go back and throw that football. And he made a couple of yards. They could have used two downs to try to get into the end zone. Actually, they don't have to get into the end zone to pick up a first down. But he's in a situation now where he's going to have to throw the football. Morgan goes to the far side. The Jets have five men in the secondary. Rolling right, throwing right, pass is complete. Jackson back stepping out of bounds just inside the two or the one yard line on the far side. Let's see where they spotted it. It's near the first down marker. I don't believe 
Levy made the first down, he and he not. had to turn around Charlie to make the catch, and he was he caught it going backwards. Had he uh, caught it in full stride, would he have been able to turn up field? He would have gotten into the end zone. Now, Bill Lincoln is coming in, and that means that Brock, Pete Brock, the center, will be moving over to tight end. Now, Brock, number 58, has to report this to the official. Of course, it is fourth down and just a couple of feet. But Brock, you may recall, in 1976, caught a touchdown pass here against the New York Jets. I remember Jets. that. I was here. I was here with you. That's right. Yes. Fourth down, a couple of feet. You got it. Touchdown, New England. I don't think anybody would question that call going forward on fourth down when your record is one victory. When you're supposed to be a contender. You can't be satisfied when you're down by the goal line and kick a field goal because you have to feel offensively that you ought to be able to get a yard any place on the football field, whether it's on the one yard line or the middle of the field. Mostly Tatupu scoring from a couple of yards out. It's a seven to six ball game. Gavin ought to hold John Smith to attempt the point after. 83 yard drive in 10 plays for the tie. And they've got it. It is now New England seven and the Jets seven with 14 13 left to go in the first half. We're all tied up at Shea Stadium. We'll be back with a kickoff. If one plug goes wrong in an eight cylinder car, you've still got seven left to pull you along. But if one goes wrong in a four cylinder car, you've got problems. Autolite spark plugs are made for small engines. They've got a fused glass seal in here to give you full power and a wide heat range that helps stop misfiring and fouling at low speeds. If you have a small car, why not get a plug made for small engines? Autolite. Denny's introduces the Beefadelphia sandwich. We grill lean beef, juicy and tender. Melt rich mozzarella cheese over the top. Add succulent grilled onions. Cover with a soft French roll and serve it all for the special introductory price this month of only $2.99. The new Beefadelphia sandwich only at Denny's, where you'll like our prices and you'll love our food. Just imagine flying to Europe free. Just for flying TWA in the U.S. It's TWA's frequent flight bonus. Fly just 60,000 miles during the next 15 months and get two tickets to Europe free. Other bonuses start at just 10,000 miles. TWA, the only airline that offers two free tickets to Europe. You're gonna like us, TWA. John Smith set to kick off to either Kurt Zone or Lamb Jones. Taken at the 11-yard line by Zone. And he returns it to about the 28-yard line. So 17 yards on the return, and Smith's kickoff was not that deep. Zamberlin and Matthews on the tackle. Let's take a look at the scoring play, and you can see number uh, 26 is Dykes, the cornerback. He is knocked out. Excellent block, knocking him out and creating a cavity or a hole inside where Tatupu could go inside to make the score. There's a very simple reason why, why plays work, and that's because of execution. And that last block was an excellent one. I believe it was by Pete Brock, the center who moved over to the tight end position, the short yardage. Augustinian picks up nine yards on the play. They had marked the ball at the 29-yard line. He goes to the 38. It'll be second down one as Hawkins and Sanford make the tackle at that point. I think we can see right now why Ron Earhart, the head coach, decides to go for a touchdown because he wants to, to keep that defense off the field. Los Angeles now leading Atlanta by the score of 13 to nothing. Two field goals by Frank Coriel, 25 and 37 yards. Philadelphia in front of New Orleans, 14-7. Yes, sir. Jaworski throwing a touchdown pass. Second down, and it was closer than we thought. Walt Michaels, the head coach of the New York Jets. Jets on the far sideline, doing the Patriots on the near sideline. Gorgeous afternoon. Temperature in the mid-60s. Sun is out. Few clouds in the sky. And just a light breeze at Shea Stadium. And for Shea Stadium, a light breeze is a blessing. 
because the wind can really whip around in this stadium. Bam Jones is in the slot on the left side. The quick pitch is to Bruce Harper. Harper's got the first down. Across the 50 into Patriot territory. New England 47 yard line Marvin Powell number 79 the right tackle leading the way shows you what a big man can do Marvin Powell has been hampered with injuries and he is playing today but he was out in front of Bruce Harper who is the fastest man on the team 42 is Harper out in front of him right there number 79 is Marvin Powell gets an excellent block paving the way for Harper look at now Harper's no dummy. He's following that big man wherever you go Marvin. I'm going to go right behind you. First down New England 47 yard line. Augustiniak the remaining back he swings left. Dodd throws under pressure and it is intercepted at the 26 yard line. The Patriots have the turnover. Rick Sanford with the interception. Richard Todd was decked right after he made his release and Tony McGee is the man who brought him down. He was looking downfield to his halfback Harper but the pass was nowhere near Bruce Harper. Here's the interception the first turnover of the ball game. And you can see right right there that there is no New York jet around. Twenty five Rick Sanford coming up with the football. Richard Todd fortunately though as we're looking at this replay Richard Todd is walking off the field and he does not look to be seriously injured. So that is only the fifth interception of the year for the New England Patriots and Sanford has his first one. We've got a timeout 1234 left to go in the first half. We're tied at seven. When I'm not making music with the Charlie Daniels band, you'll find me here at home in Tennessee. And where you find me, you'll find my skull. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum, and it sure feels good. In fact, I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And my place here, <laughs> that's something I just can't get too much of. Enjoy tobacco without lighting up. Try Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. Some people thought it was risky to taste test my Schlitz against other top beers on live TV. But not our people here at Schlitz. We figured a lot of beer drinkers would pick Schlitz over their beer. And they did. Second hopping, Russ? Right. In my 40 years as a master brewer, I've never been more proud of my people or my beer. We'll keep brewing great beer, so more of you will keep choosing it. Taste our Schlitz. Behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. Next Sunday, join host Brian Gumbel for NFL 81. All the highlight scores and late breaking news from all the games in regional NFL action featuring the game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Check your local issues, game and time in your area. Next Sunday, we start it all with NFL 81. New England, a first down on their own 47 yard line. Kavanaugh has completed five of six for 65 yards. Far sideline, pass is complete. May have picked up the first down. Harold Jackson pulled it in. Ken Shroy had the coverage on Harold. Jackson has been averaging just over 21 yards of reception. Philadelphia continuing now. They're leading New Orleans 21 to 7. That's in the second quarter. They still have a great deal of respect for Harold Jackson's speed, don't they? You bet. They give him a lot of room, so he's capable of running that sideline pattern. And he runs patterns about as well as anybody in the National Football League. Gain of nine, second and one, Jackson in motion. Tatupu pulled down at the 41 yard line. We've got a first down. Lance Bell with a tackle. Now let's go to Bryant Gumbel. Charlie, in pursuit of their fourth straight win, the Pittsburgh Steelers are playing a tough out at Three Rivers, already leading 7-0. Jack Ham strips Charlie White of the ball. Gary Dunn recovers. Steelers in business and leading in the ball game. Charlie? Thank you, Brian. It's also nice to hear that Jack Ham is back playing. He's, I could, a couple of years ago, I considered him not the best outside linebacker in the yeah. game. First down, New England, 41-yard line of the Jets. Good protection. Pass is tipped. It's intercepted. Jets had the football. Darrell Ray, that is his fourth interception of the year. Back to back turnovers, and then the ball pops loose in a scramble for it at the 45 yard line. The Jets recover the fumble. They retain possession after the turnover. 
Now the Jets have something to, to cheer about because Stanley Morgan, number 86, had his hands on the football. And when you get your hands on the ball and it pops up in the air, generally there's a defensive man around. That ball looked like it should have been caught by Morgan. Kavanaugh throwing the ball. It is a little high, but you can see right there he had his hands on the football. Del Ray ever alert coming up with the interception, bringing it back to the 45-yard line of the Patriots. Excellent field position right now for the New York Jets. And credit Donald Dykes with a fumble recovery. A 34-yard interception return. 45-yard line of New England. Augustiniak. A couple of yards left side. 43-yard line. It'll be second down and eight as Rod Schott and Bill Matthews make the tackle. So we've had a pair of turnovers, one on each side. That evens things up. Billy Taylor comes into the ball game, the former Giant, acquired by the Jets on Thursday. Six feet even, 215 pounds from Texas Tech in his fourth year in the National Football League. That doesn't sound like a Giant six feet tall. That's... Kind of like normal size, Charlie. Well, what about it sound like a Meadowland? No, you say <laughs> New York. New York. Time. Time. I right. see. Augustiniak, 19 yards and four carries. Second and eight. Jets stay on the ground. Taylor gets the call. And he'll get a couple of yards. It'll be third down and six. Rod Schott with the tackle. First carry of Billy Taylor as a New York Jet. And he got hit by... The nose guard Richard Hamilton about two yards deep in the end or uh, from the line of scrimmage but he kept moving and picked up a couple of yards. Third down and six and Richard Todd in a position right now where he's going to have to throw the football. The Patriots have five men in the secondary. Dodge pass is there. So the Jets have the first down. They have now converted four out of four third down opportunities. Roland James with the tackle. Bobby Jones pulled it in at the 30-yard line, a gain of 11 and a first down. Charlie, you know, we've seen Richard Todd many times, and I don't think I've seen him look any better. He is sharp, quick, and on target. He is firing that ball, and there isn't much hesitation to uh, his decisions as to where to go. He was reading that defense, and he is firing the football. He did throw a couple of bad passes, one that was intercepted, and the other one to Barkham that he threw behind him, but other than those two, he's been throwing the ball very well. At the Patriot 30-yard line. First down. Into double coverage, incomplete. A flag will be dropped against the Patriots. Barkham was bottled up, and the pass was over the other shoulder. He had to turn around and look for it. I think what it was, it's, if it's against uh, Tim Fox, who the referee or the umpire was pointing his finger at, it is really a big break for the Jets because I believe Richard Todd was just throwing that football away. He was looking for his, his man in the corner of the end zone, and he had two defensive men around him, so he wisely just threw it over everybody. Tim Fox and Rick Sanford had excellent position as far as the coverage was concerned. Here is the pass into the end zone by everybody, really, as you can see right there. Over through everybody. The flag went down. The finger was pointed at number 48, Tim Fox. 48 on the defense. Right there is where they call it. It's first down. So it becomes a 29-yard penalty. The ball at the one-yard line is first down goal to go. Durking and Long are the two setbacks. Durking. against the New York Jets. That is the preliminary call from Richard Todd. Yes. That's the signal to the bench. Go ahead. There is an area you never want to do that because you take your you're there down there at the goal line to penalize yourself. If you're going to miss a man, don't take a chance. Holding on the number two tight end, Steve Stevens. Don't take a chance. Even if you miss your man, that doesn't mean the man is going to make the tackle. If he makes the tackle, it's still going to be at the line of scrimmage. Now they put him back on the 11-yard line. At its first down goal to go at the 11. Changes the complexion. 
Well, they had four shots to get it in from the one yard line. Harper and Augustiniak back in the ball game. Delayed draw left side. Augustiniak is decked at the five yard line, but he got six. It'll be second down goal to go. It's a good play, six yards, but still going back to the penalty. They're on the six yard line and it's second down. As opposed to having a touchdown or even second down and one at the at the one yard line. That's why there are certain areas you really don't take a chance on on coming up with a penalty. Bill Matthews Tim Fox on the tackle at the five yard line second down goal to go. Although the Jets have committed a few they lead the league in penalties. He was just throwing that ball away. He was looking and he he really didn't have anybody immediately around him but you can sense and feel pressure back there when you've been playing quarterback long enough and you know after a certain amount of time it's time to do something and Richard said let's get it up into the stands. Todd now has completed seven of eleven for eighty six yards. Augustiniak has five carries for twenty seven yards. Third down goal five yard line. Has pressure. It is tipped. It is caught. Jerome Markham, his second touchdown reception of the ball game. He now has five on the year on a tip ball. But when the breaks start going your way, they continue. Last week against Miami, they had some some plays that they felt that were very fortunate for the Jets. Number 83. Jerome Barkham. He was not the primary receiver. He's drifting back in the end zone. The ball is thrown. You can see Tim Fox. Everybody left. It was tipped by 44, and that would be Tom Newton, the back for the New York Jets. And Leahy puts it through. The extra point is good. So the score, the New York Jets 14, the New England Patriots 7. Jerome Barkham now has three receptions, two of them for touchdown. Can an American driving machine outdistance every Datsun on the highway? If we put a gallon of gas in every Datsun and a gallon in the 1982 Dodge Omni Miser, here's what would happen. One by one, every Datsun would run out. But Omni Miser would keep driving on and on because Omni Miser has the highest highway mileage of any five passenger American car and the lowest price. And at $54.99, the 82 Dodge Omni Miser doesn't cost a dollar more this year than it cost at the end of last year. 1948. Harry Truman was president. Joe DiMaggio hit 320. Gas was 25 cents a gallon. And Michelin came out with a new kind of tire, the radial. Over the years, radials have saved billions of gallons of gas. And today, more than half the tires on the road are radials. Keep it up, America. The more we ride on radials, the more fuel we save. Michelin's been making the tire for the 80s since 1948. Michelin. We put America on radials. They've won their respective division, the best four teams in baseball. So be there for all the action of the league championship playoffs starting Tuesday night on the home of great baseball, NBC Sports. Pat Leahy will be kicking off, and Tony Collins is the deep back. Takes it a yard deep. 10, 15, 20. Flag is down. He returns to the 27-yard line, a return of 28 yards, but we'll check out the flag. Johnny Lynn makes the tackle. Generally on a kickoff return, with the exception of face masking by the kicking team, the penalties generally go against the receiving team. Richard Todd has thrown for nine touchdowns in the last two and a half games. He's on a roll, isn't he? He's he really hot. is. And like you said, he is throwing as well as we've ever seen him throw. And he's making decisions. The one, the one pass that he threw. First down. Well, the officials decided that it was no foul. 
Put the flag back in the pocket and we'll continue. He made a good move on uh, the second down situation. Here is the uh, the reception. That's like finding money, isn't it? Jerome Barkham's there, but the ball just. Uh, here he is coming off the line of scrimmage. 44 is Tom Newton, and he is the man that was the ball was thrown to. He touches it. He jumps up, and it pops up into the air. Fortunately for the Jets, Barkham is there for the touchdown. The second of the afternoon. Let's see if New England now can put together their second drive. The last time they moved 80 yards in 10 plays, and here's a sack. Abdul Salam and Joe Klicko pick up the second sack for the Jets, who have a total of 19 on the year. New England on the other side has only three sacks. Now, there was a play action fake by Kavanaugh. But you can see the offensive tackle is backing up. So what does that tell the defensive end? It doesn't tell him it's a running play. It tells him it's a pass play. So that's why Klecko was right back in the face of the quarterback. What has to happen is that offensive tackle has to fire out at that defensive end to make him think that it's a run. Otherwise, why fake the ball to a back? Loss 11, second and 21 on the draw. Tony Collins. Collins to the 20. And then goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So he picks up eight yards. Now let's take an update break. Charlie, this is Byron Day in New York. The Browns have never won at Three Rivers in 11 tries, and they're on the wrong end of the score right now. Dave Trout boots it in from 19 yards out. The Steelers lead 10-zip in the second. Charlie? Thank you, Byron. First time that you've joined us on our telecast today. I guess Brian is out uh, taking a little break, having a spot of coffee. Third down and 13. Johnny Lynn has the coverage. Morgan, the intended receiver. It made no difference because he was way shorter than the first down marker anyway. Situation like that, you must run your patterns deep enough that if you catch the football, you pick up the first down. Had he caught that ball the way he was running, he'd have run straight out of bounds anyway. Wouldn't have made it. Fourth down and 13. Chance to take a good look at Ken Hartley, the new kicker for the New England Patriots. He's from Rintham, Massachusetts. That's just four miles from Schaefer Stadium. And it's blocked. It is blocked by Johnny Lynn. And the Jets have the ball at the 29-yard line of New England. So Hartley is off to an inauspicious start. What did you say? Let's take a look at him. <laughs> That's what Johnny Lynn did. Johnny Lynn took a very close look. Good angle by Johnny Lynn. He didn't go. If, uh, if he hadn't touched the ball, though, with touching the kicker's leg, it would have been a penalty. But he bobbled that ball. That was just enough time for Johnny Lynn to get in, get his hands up, get his hands on that football. Now the Jets, once again, an excellent field position. New England, 29-yard line. That punt goes in the books as a five-yard kick. They got the blitz on. They He's got there. He's got a touchdown. Wesley Walker. Richard Todd is now thrown for three touchdowns in the ball game. He beat Mike Haynes. Excellent timing that time, Charlie, by Richard Todd because they had the blitz on. They were coming after him. He got the ball off in the good hands of Wesley Walker coming up with a touchdown. Extra point is good. And the Jets pull away. It's a 21 7 ball game. Wesley Walker has three. Ray Jones, Lynn Doss, and Pat Leahy will be kicking off. The deep back is Tony Collins. 7.23, time remaining in the first half. The Jets lead by 14, 21 to 7. Richard Todd with three touchdown passes. Feel at the one-yard line by Collins. 20. He turns it to about the 27-yard line. Now let's go back to that touchdown pass. 
Pitcher Todd back in the back in the pocket, and they do have the blitz coming on. As you can see, the linebacker coming. He knows it's coming on. He throws his ball. It's a sideline and up pattern, and he throws it way before he makes his final move. And you can see down in the corner of your screen that number 85, Wesley Walker, had a step on his man, and it was good for six points. A touchdown drive of 29 yards in one play took five seconds, and Wesley Walker now has scored six touchdowns receiving this year and leads the NFL in that category. Now New England goes to work at their own 27-yard line. Jackson comes in motion. The pass to Harold is a bit low. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson. Seven minutes and eight seconds left to go in the second quarter at Shea Stadium. The New York Jets leading New England 21 to 7. Richard Todd has thrown three touchdown passes, two to Jerome Barkham, the second on a tip, and then to Wesley Walker. The New England Patriots scoring as Mose Tatupu scored from two yards out, capping an 80 yard drive. Kavanaugh has completed six of nine for 74 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Tony Collins gets the call, and Abdul Salam is there to greet him. Patriots not moving that football and maintaining possession. And now, now we can understand why Ron Earhart, the head coach of the Patriots, made the statement that uh, he, he didn't want his defense on the field. Kansas City leading Oakland by the score of 10 to nothing. Now, Oakland. Is that's heading got, there from that's the second quarter. They were shut out two games in a row, so that's uh, nine, quarters. nine quarters in a row. They have yet to score a point. Third down and nine. Cameron on the shotgun. As pressure goes deep into coverage. Incomplete. Ken Toller, the rookie from Mississippi, the attended receiver was Troy and Ray, the defensive back. A good play by Toller, 82, that young rookie, because the Jets were back there waiting to make the reception, and he ran into the defensive end, preventing him from catching it. Also you can see how deep, pass. yeah, see how deep the uh, the secondary is. Ray is back there, number 28 for the New York Jets. Ken Hartley kicking for the third time in the ball game. Second time was a disaster. Stone takes it, 37-yard line to the 40, then reverses back to the 37. Fumbles. Is hit, fumbles. New England can have the ball. At the 31-yard line, they do. Tatupu, Mosey Tatupu, scooped up the ball. So events keep turning around. That was a poor move on his part. He should have just continued to go straight ahead. When you start reversing your field, after you've you've gone uh, upfield, you're going to take a chance because that's giving all of those people an opportunity to get down there and get around the ball. He should have gotten as much as he possibly could, gotten out of bounds or downfield as far as he could. New England player injured will be back to update. His situation at the 30-yard line, we've got a timeout. Is Lynn Dawson, L-I-N Dawson for Linwood. And he is the injured player, but he's coming out. Well, nobody ever had to carry me off the field. I always come off on my own. Why? What is that macho thing that you have to walk out off the field on your own, even with a broken leg, you want to do that? <laughs> That's because... If they hit me, those big guys hit me, I want all the help in the world getting off the field. Bring out the cart the ambulance and let them carry me. Bob Golick is the man who jarred the ball loose. And New England has the ball at the New York Jet 30-yard line in a first down. They trail 21-7. Calhoun gets the call. His forward progress is a yard to the 29. It's second down and nine. Mark Gastineau just wrapped him up in his arms. Running attack is not going right now for the Patriots, which is putting them in a position where They've got to put the ball up in the air on second down. Now they're second nine. They're going to have to throw the ball or have some sort of a uh, turnovers in the ball game. Patriots giving it up twice. Play action fake did not fake Joe Klecko.
what they were trying to do. They had an offensive lineman coming out. That was uh, that was a designed play because Kavanaugh does have the ability to run with that football. They were hoping that Klecko would chase the ball carriers are supposedly ball carriers but here was a problem on that one the offensive tackle didn't go that way he went the other way and that's who that defensive end is reading he's reading the the offensive tackle third down and 13. deep into the corner incomplete is too far jackson the intended receiver Jerry Holmes had excellent coverage, took him all the way to the back edge of the end zone. Ball took just too long to get there and gave the defensive end an opportunity to react. I think that uh, had he seen him earlier and fired that ball, much like Richard Todd did to Wesley Walker, Jackson might have had a touchdown because he was open momentary. See, he's right there, and now he's waiting on the ball. Giving the defensive end an opportunity to, to catch up. Ken Hartley will be kicking for the corner. Might have it. He does have it. Let's see where they mark it out. No, they're going to rule it into the end zone. I thought that he had it. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. They'll so mark it at the Jets 20. They'll have a first down. They might mark that down. They had an excellent opportunity recovering that fumble, and they did not get any points. 446 is the time remaining in the first half, and the Jets lead by 14 points. 61 replacing Marvin Powell at right tackle. Powell's okay. He's been, been bothered by a knee. He missed the last two ball games. Roman has been playing there and playing very well. He's in the ball game now. Todd has completed 9 of 14 for 120 yards. Screen left side is to Augustiniak. From the 20 to the 23, a fumble and a scramble for it. And New England comes up with a football. So the Patriots will have still one more opportunity. John Zamberlin recovered the fumble. And John's going to keep the football. I don't blame him. That's time of possession. When John has it, nobody takes it away from him. Things change in a hurry. You know, here it is. The Jets had tip balls that they were going in for touchdowns. Things were going their way. And all of a sudden, they're turning around and turning that football back to the Patriots. Two fumbles the last two times they've had the football. At the Jet 23-yard line, first down. The pitch is to Calhoun. Yeah. Kavanaugh took three steps of an option that got rid of the ball. There was only one option in Matt Kavanaugh's mind, and that was get the ball out to Calhoun. But that's what he was doing, going down the line of scrimmage, trying to entice uh, that linebacker and defensive end to converge on him. Blinka and Mel with the tackle, a gain of seven. Here we are, the turnovers. The Jets have turned it over three times to the Patriots' one. Had an interception and also two fumbles that... Uh, in problems for the New York Jets. Second and three. Vegas Ferguson. Ken Troy and Lance Mel with the tackle. He got into the line of scrimmage and kept looking for a hole. There really wasn't much of a hole there, but I've got enough yardage on his own to pick up the first down. He needed three and he got four. Just inside the 12 yard line of the New York Jets. Jets leading by 14. 3.23 and counting. Time remaining in the first half. Tony Collins and Don Calhoun are the running backs for the Patriots. Calhoun to the eight. Has four. It'll be second down six. Lions and Klecko make the tackle. For the Patriots on this drive coming here to the end of the first half, they've got to come away with some points. They're down 14 points. They've got to come away with at least three. Green Bay leading Tampa Bay by the score of seven to nothing. That's in the first quarter. Green Bay's uh, newest addition, J.J. Jefferson. Jefferson. 
It wasn't, it wasn't uh, J.J., it was uh, Gary Ellis on a seven-yard run that provided the seven, seven points for the pack. Tony Collins. Collins into the end zone. 23-yard drive, four plays. Tony Collins scoring his fourth touchdown of the year, his first of the ball game, and it's a 21-13. Score with the extra point to come. Well, the Jets, uh, they escaped the first time when the, uh, the ball was fumbled on the punt, but the second fumble they did not, resulting in a touchdown for the Patriots. Collins, 40 yards, eight carries, and a touchdown. Here's the extra point attempt, the hole by Kavanaugh. The kicker is John Smith. And it is good. So it's a 21 to 14 ball game. The Jets now lead by seven. Here's the replay. Number 73, Big John Hanna pulling around, and he gets through the through the hole. Now, he gets into the end zone. Now, Big John Hanna can get into the end zone. That means that there is a hole there for the running back. 75, Bob Kreider also out in front. Good blocking by that offensive line of the Patriots. Coming up with a touchdown and now narrowing the margin to just one touchdown, 21 to 14. A report on Marvin Powell as a strained back has been replaced by John Roman, but he could return. And John Smith will be kicking off. Lamb Jones and Kurt Sohn, the two deep backs for New York. 231 left to go. First half. It is high and short. Taken to the 10 yard line by Sohn. To the 20. And down at the 24 yard line. So the Jets set up shot. 26 yards away from the end zone. As Blackman makes the tackle for the Patriots. Well, the last two times the Jets had the football, or they had their hands on the football, they turned it right around to the Patriots, and I'm sure that that's on their mind right now. And Richard Todd is probably telling his backs, if he has called a running play, hey, hold on to the football. That's, if they're going to get anything, make them work for it. Marvin Powell is back in the ballgame at right tackle for New York. First down, Jets, their own 24-yard line. Augustiniak gets the call. He bobbled the ball for a moment, but he was already down at the 29, so he has five. It'll be second and five. Mike Hawkins with the tackle. Well, right away, Marvin Powell came back into the ball game. They said, well, let's find out if Marvin's all right, because they ran right at his side. Picked up good yardage, too. We're coming, coming up on the yeah. two-minute warning. And Richard Todd heads to the far sideline for a conference. Two minutes left to go in the first half. The score, the New York Jets 21, the New England Patriots 14, where as Rick Sanford also is the number one. So they have five men that play in the secondary that are all number one draft choices. Bruce Harper, Tom Newton, the two running backs. Todd throws, far side, pass complete. First down. Lamb Jones, that is only his second reception of the year. And it may not stand up as a flag was dropped back in the 22-yard line. If it's offensive holding, you'll put the eraser on the game. I saw one of the Jets try to pick up the yellow flag and put it in his pocket, but he didn't have a pocket. So they're going to bring that ball back. It'll be offensive holding, a 10-yard penalty. Here once again, the New York Jets with penalties hurting themselves. Coming into the ball game, they were leading the National Football League with penalties. And they're holding on to that statistic. Well, that's a statistic you don't want. Because here it is. Now, instead of a first down. Holding 66 offense. No. Randy, no. Randy Rasmussen, 36 no. years of age. No, I can't In believe that. Year. Here they are, the penalty, uh, penalties, three to one. Second and 50. 151 left to go, first half. Jets lead by seven, 21 14. Todd to throw. Has pressure, and he is sacked. Julius Adams got him. That is the first sack of the ball game for the Patriots, and only their fourth on the year. He did an excellent job of blowing right by Chris Ward. He got the jump on him, and generally a defensive, but you take a look at the, uh, the left part of your screen. 72 is Chris Ward, and if you're going to beat an offensive tackle, generally you're going to do it in about the first two or three steps to get him turned, to get him moving, and that's what happened on that play. And New England takes a timeout, stopping the clock with a minute 43 left to go. 
And that front three of the Patriots taking some views and Rod Schott make the tackle. The Patriots stop the clock. 135 left to go in the first half and Chuck Ramsey will be kicking. You know you hear a few of the, the, the people booing that because of that running play but uh, third I'm and sure 24 th that's a good choice. Well it's a long way to go to pick up a first down and if you throw the football and it's incomplete you're going to stop the clock so they didn't feel that they were going to pick up that first down so they're going to keep it on the ground and force the Patriots to utilize one of their timeouts. It was a draw play or a delay play hoping that uh, perhaps they could break a break that running back loose into the secondary. Mike Haynes will be returning the kick of Chuck Ramsey. This is Ramsey's second one. His first one went 42 yards. You're always interested in what a ball club does on first down because that sets up the series. The Jets have been averaging 7.7 .7 yards on 13 first down plays. New England in 14 first down plays have been averaging under two yards. 1.8. Big difference. Which means that on second down, the Patriots are in a passing situation, which takes the guesswork away from the Jets. Here's the kick. Barely gets it away, and it is a good one. Haynes takes it at the 33 to the 35. And he is down at the 38. So he has five yards on the return. Lance Mel was there for the New York Jets. An excellent kick by Chuck Ramsey. And it's excellent coverage by the New York Jets because Haynes had absolutely no place to go. Patriots have a first down, a 51-yard kick by Ramsey. 124 left to go in the half. Well, looky here. Atlanta is coming back. They are now leading the Los Angeles Rams in the second quarter by the score of 21 to 20. Bartkowski throwing two touchdown passes in that, in that ball game. Kavanaugh's pass is complete tight end. Hasselbeck has it. And he is dropped at the 44 yard line. A gain of seven. Greg Buttle makes the tackle. 110 and counting. Second down and three. Throwing it away to stop the clock. Morgan caught it out of bounds. It'll be third and three with exactly one minute left to go in the half. Now they have to pick up the first down. They should have had a play called where they uh, were going to throw the ball to the sidelines, but they did that rather deeply, though, threw it out of bounds, but a play to pick up the first down. Because now what are they going to do if it's third down and they don't pick up the first down? They're going to have to punt the ball away. Ken Toller comes in, the rookie from Mississippi, number 82. Three wide receivers, Morgan, Jackson, and Toller. Andy Johnson is the remaining back. Hasselbeck the tight end in motion. Kavanaugh's pass oh, yeah. is way under yeah. thrown to Harold Jackson. And Jackson was wide, wide open. The defensive line of the Jets made that play because Harold Jackson was wide open. He not only would have had the first down, but had he been able to turn up field and somebody missed a tackle, could have been six points. But here again, I was saying before, just throwing the ball away to stop the clock is one thing, but if you only need about three yards, you ought to have a play call that you could pick up the first down, throw it to the back out in the flat, and let him jump out of bounds. Now they've got to punt it away. Hertzone and Ken Troy set for the return of Ken Hartley's kick. High hanging ball, fair catch call for at the 21-yard line. Hertzone with the fair catch at the 21, and a flag is dropped. Seconds left to go in the first half. The marker, of course, stopping the clock. And the conference being held at the 21 yard line. Don't forget halftime. NFL 81. Ryan Gumbel will be updating all the scores and highlights in what has been the year of the upset. First of foul against the Jets. On the Jets with two. the 25 he has 15 yards of the play and a first down it, it creates a problem now they were ready to run out the clock but they made such good yardage on that 30 seconds remaining if they make another good play like that they'll call timeout and try to get something 
Dodd going over the middle, and it's caught. 44-yard line. Now they'll stop the clock. 19 and counting. Wesley Walker pulled it in. The clock is stopped with 18 seconds left. First half. That run, to have a shot at it, is because of the running play. Now with that timeout, the statistic that you saw changes because the Jets have only one timeout remaining. New England has one. Remember that New York had to call a timeout in the first minute and a half of the ball game when they had a mix-up at their end of the field. That play from Richard Todd to Wesley Walker covered 18 yards. Walker now four receptions for 67 yards and a touchdown. And the last two ball games, he's uh, had receptions over 200 yards. He's, uh, I think, got off to a slow start, but uh, he's catching up in a hurry. Against Houston, he had eight for 128 yards and two touchdowns. Against Miami, eight for 112 and two touchdowns. So he's right on target for another kind of an outing. 44-yard line. 18 seconds left to go. New York in their own territory. First half. Dodd has completed 11 of 16. He's thrown for three touchdowns. Oh, Julius thing. Adams just led her to the Jet backfield. Now was he pulled off? He's saying that he was. He's pointing the finger at an offensive lineman. From tackle to tackle, once an offensive lineman goes to the set, the three of the four-point stands, he cannot move. Apparently there was no motion. Rod Schott is exchanging greetings also with the Jets. A lot of finger pointing going on. Well, they're taking a look over here. You're allowed to come to a three-point stance, but you can't move. Can we, that? Can we look at that again? Look at Rasmussen, the left guard. Did he move his uh, right foot? Was that a motion that I saw? If we can pick that up again. Offside, defense, first down. Well, we don't have time. Second penalty against New England for a total of 34 yards. You remember the 29-yard pass interference penalty to the one-yard line. Sideline pattern is complete and out of bounds. Walker has it. Stops the clock. 13 seconds. Good timing by Richard Todd. He took about three or four steps back, fired that ball to the outside. He read the defense very well, knew that, that Wesley Walker was going to be out there, and he got the ball to him in a hurry. He got out of bounds. You can see right now it's man-to-man -man coverage. The ball is on its way. Before he even made the cut to the outside, the ball is hit him right on the numbers. Richard Todd is impressing me. Now, I've seen him in the past, and he's had a lot of inconsistency, but he seems to be much more sure of himself now. A gain of 19 to the 37-yard line of New England. Out of the backfield, this is Bruce Harper. He'll have to take the timeout, 33-yard line, five seconds and counting. They stop it right at the five seconds. Five seconds left to go in the half. And Pat Leahy will come in with a field goal attempt. Go back to that run. Because they were real willing to run out the clock with what was it, 30-some seconds to, to go in the first half. But they, they made good yardage on that run, so that changed the whole idea, the whole complexion of what they were attempting to do before half. At least now, because of that run, if they had picked up a couple of yards, they wouldn't have called timeout. They'd have run the ball again, said, keep your hands on the ball, and don't fumble it, and ran out the clock. At least now, because of that one play, they at least have an opportunity to get some more points on the board. The line of scrimmage, the 33, so he'll be kicking for the 40, an attempt of 50 yards, adding the 10 yards in the end zone. His longest this year is 49 yards. He has hit five of eight. Take a look at the uh, the, the uh, stringers on the on the goalpost. If anything, the wind should be helping him. Pat Ryan will be holding at the 40-yard line. An attempt of 50 yards. Leahy does have this range. Boy, does he ever have the distance, but he misses it to the right side. That was a kick of about 65 yards in the air, but he was off to the right side, and time runs out as Leahy missed. Staff, Lynn, give us a rundown. Taking a look at the, at the statistics, first downs, the Jets uh, 13 to 9, and taking a look all around, total yards 227 for the New York Jets, 133 for, for the Patriots. Passing-wise, Todd is having a good day. Now... Three turnovers by the Jets compared to the one by the Patriots. There would be uh, seven points less on the board, I think, with the Patriots if they hadn't coughed up that football late in the first half. 
time of possession was close to being uh, being equal not that much difference only one time of possession counts and that is who has the game football Pat Leahy kicking off with Tony Collins the deep back Collins takes it a yard deep and he'll return he's out to the 10 15 across the 22 about the 23 maybe the 24 yard line they'll spot it at the 23 return of 24 so New England goes to work with Matt Cavanaugh the quarterback Tony Collins and Don Calhoun the starting running back should both be in there with Harold Jackson Stanley Morgan and Don Hasselbeck as the three receivers Hasselbeck of course being the tight end and that offensive line stays basically the same Wheeler Hannah Brock Kreider and Jordan. So New England from their own 23 yard line trailing by 7 21 14 as we open the second half at Shea Stadium. Temperature in the mid 60s very little wind today. The second back through is Collins and he has a couple of yards to the 25 it'll be second down eight as Marty Lyons and Joe Klecko make the tackle. Let's look at the defense of the Jets that front four of Gastineau Salam Lyons and Klecko. The linebackers Buttle Blinka and Mel changes in the secondary from the start with Holmes and Dykes on the corners Troy and Ray at the safety. Second down and eight and again New England. Not that successful on first down. You mentioned that picking it, up only two yards. You mentioned in the first half they were less than two yards on first down, forcing them to throw just like they're doing right now. And overthrown. Don Hasselback, the intended receiver. Blinka had the coverage. Fleco putting the pressure on. It's third down and eight at the 25. That would have had to have been a perfect pass because uh, Hasselback does have an advantage in height over Blinka, but when you have it that you have to throw it that finely, then you're in trouble. In the first half, Tony Collins, the leading rusher for the Patriots, eight carries for 40 yards. Jackson, their top receiver, three for 40. Kavanaugh completing seven of 15 for 82 and an interception. Johnny Lynn, fifth man in the secondary for the Jets. Third down and eight. They want to pick up this first down. You don't want to start the second half uh, three plays and out. From the shotgun. Pass is there. It is caught. Stanley Morgan underneath the throw of Kavanaugh Donald Dykes with the tackle that is only the second of eight third down situations that the Patriots have converted to a first down the blitz was on they were coming up you can see Buttle 51 the linebackers are coming meaning this man to man coverage in the secondary a good move by Stanley Morgan and he has extreme speed he's the fastest man on this Patriot football team and I said what they did not want to do is go in three downs and out the Jets uh, took a chance there. They thought they could get to the quarterback before he could get the ball off. But the offensive line did a good job of picking up the blitzing linebackers. A 28-yard reception by Morgan. First down at the Jet 47-yard line. Jackson in motion. Cabin on the throw. Over the middle, it is dropped. Tony Collins, the rookie out of the backfield, couldn't hold on to it. Blinko was there, but it was a catchable football. Very much catchable. He was taking a peek looking around to see where that defensive man was and how he was going to run after he caught the football. But this is a young rookie. It's an outstanding uh, prospect. He's going to learn first things first. Catch the ball first, then worry about running with it. Second down and 10 at the New York 47-yard line. We're a minute and three seconds into the second half. Because, Charlie, they all know <laughs> you're going to get hit out there. This is a game of getting knocked around quite a bit. That's no secret that when you catch it in the middle, you're going to get get hit very hard but sometimes you want to know from which <laughs> side yeah you want to know who's <laughs> going to do it Kavanaugh yeah. underthrown bad pass had his man open that was mostly tattoo for it's a bad pass you can, you can credit the the defense for putting the pressure on him because he really didn't have an opportunity to get back there and get set step and fire that ball here it is linebackers come up and now you see the stunts the games being played here between the defensive tackles coming around and that is Salam. They're all back there right in the face of that quarterback. And you can see Matt Cavanaugh shaking his head because he knew he had his man open. Had he gotten him the football, it would have been complete and it would have been a first down. Now he's got to go back into the shotgun and try to pick up a first down. And again, New England converting only two of eight third down opportunities. And here's a sack. Joe Klecko gets the sack. That is the fourth for the Jets, and Klecko has three and a half of them. Salam has the other one half. Regardless of how good the offensive line is, when you've got 
to throw the football. You can see the games that they're playing. Klecko going to the inside. Marty Lyons going to the outside. But everybody is converging on that quarterback. And you can see Kavanaugh is looking downfield, but there isn't any place for them to go. He can't step up because he's going to be running right into defensive players. The kick by Ken Hartley. A knuckleball. Kurt Zone, fair catch as he looks into the sun at the 25-yard line. So the Jets will take over on their own 25 or 26 where the officials spot the ball. And New York going with Richard Todd at quarterback who has thrown three touchdown passes. We've got a timeout. The Jets have the football and the lead will be. It is Richard Todd at quarterback with Bruce Harper and Mike Augustiniak, the two running backs for the Jets. First down from their own 26. First time that the Jets have been on offense in the second half. Following that 31 yard kick by Ken Hartley, his average is just over 26 yards in the ball game. Augustiniak gets the call, maybe a yard to the 27 as Richard Bishop and Bob Golick were there. The Jets open up on the ground, and now Todd can start throwing. Going to either Wesley Walker, Derek Gaffney, or Jerome Barkham. Those are his three receivers with Chris Ward, Randy Rasmussen, Fields, Alexander, and Powell as the front line. He had his receivers split out, hoping to spread out that defense to find a gap there to run with the football. And I'm sure what they want to do is on that first play is establish the line of scrimmage and pick up four or five yards. But now they didn't accomplish that. Now they're back in a passing situation. They've got the receivers spread out once again. And Lamb Jones is in as a receiver. Second down nine to Bruce Harper. He's got it at the 32 to the 35. It'll be third down in a yard. Tony McGee makes the tackle. The Patriots go with McGee, Bishop, and Adams as the front three. The linebackers are Hawkins, Golick, Matthews, and Schott. In that secondary, Claiborne and Haynes on the corners. Sanford started a strong safety. has been replaced by Roland James, and Tim Fox is the free safety. And now offensive changes as Steve Stevens comes in at tight end. Kevin Long also checks in. Tom Newton is there. Tony McGee is slowly coming off of the field of combat. We called it third and one is third and about the length of the football. The Jets in this situation have been putting Tom Newton on that right flank and Kevin Long has been the lead blocker for Scott Durking. They've been running to the right side. Durking's responsibilities it seems is when he put in the ball game it's strictly short yardage situations that's the only time he's been in and he has been successful once they had a holding penalty they had to be called back but he's picked up the first down all right here we go third down less than a yard and if you and I know that <laughs> I'm sure the Patriots do too but it's a matter of stopping them. it is Durking he stays inside and he does not pick it up not only did we talk about it, like you said, <laughs> the Patriot defense also knew that tendency. Officials timeout stopping the clock momentarily. Going to the strong side where the, uh, the flanker and Marvin Powell is located over there on that side. Alexander, good penetration by the Patriots. That's the reason that they did such a good job of stopping it. They're bringing the chains out to check the measurement. Chuck Ramsey is in the kick. It'll be fourth down. And naturally, the people here say, go for it. <laughs> Mike Haynes is set for the return. First down average. The Jets almost nine yards on first down each play. The Patriots now just over two. Mike Haynes. I know we keep bringing that statistic up, but it really is an important statistic in your play selection. If you're second and eight, you don't have much of a chance. You've got to throw the ball or run a draw or a screen. The defense also knows that. Yes. Offensively, you want to put the defense in a guessing situation. Ramsey, the number six kicker in the AFC. Good and it's kick. a good one. Haynes at the 13-yard line, looks for blockers, and sees only green jersey. Maybe a yard on the return, and that is it. Excellent coverage by John Woodring and Al Washington, a pair of rookies. 
from Brown and Ohio State. 11.53 left to go in the third, and the Jets hold on to a seven-point lead following that 52-yard kick by Ramsey. New Backwoods Smokes just hit town. Looking wild, but tasting mild. New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. All natural tobacco, hand rolled look in a keep em fresh pocket pouch. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? Every working man believes his money is better in his pocket than in someone else's. So he expects quality and value. Can he find them in an American wagon? Absolutely. In Plymouth. Yes, Plymouth. New, tough, reliant K wagon. The only high mileage, front wheel drive, six passenger wagon in America. Sensibly priced, reliant K wagon. The American way to get your money's worth. This is Brian Gumble in New York, out at the Astrodome. Jim Zorn has been intercepted by the Oilers, but the Seahawks continue to lead 10 to 7. While we're showing you this, we want to correct some erroneous information we gave you earlier. Pat Hayden, the report that his ankle was broken may have been premature. It's now described as a severe contusion. Let's go back to Shea. The balloons remind us the uh, the Hispanic Day Parade today on Fifth Avenue, and we uh, took an extra tour down Fifth yes. Avenue. And the balloons there, the giant balloons are gorgeous. Charlie today. Jones is big on balloons. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's see if New England can be big on offense from their 14. Kavanaugh goes In deep exception. right into the arms of Daryl Ray. Ray, his second interception, he could score. Dives for the end zone. Does he make it? Yes, Daryl Ray. His second interception of the game, his fifth of the season. Interception return for a touchdown. Extra point is good. That is the third touchdown in the history of the career of Daryl Ray. The score now, the New York Jets 28 and the New England Patriots 14. I think we hit on something just prior to that. When we were talking about the number of yards the Patriots were gaining on first down, they weren't getting it done. So if you're not getting it done, you've got to do something else. Here he is, Kavanaugh back in the pocket, and he throws it to nobody but Daryl Ray. He completely misses his man way over the head. It looked like Stanley Morgan, number 86. Now it's Daryl Ray, a foot race into the end zone. And you're going to see with an extra effort right at the end zone, he gets in. You can see his teammates out in front trying to give him a help. Dykes made a, made a block for him. What is that, his fifth uh, interception on the season? Right. Second today. And On the sideline, Steve Grogan warming up, and I'm, I'm, looks like that we're going to see a change at quarterback. And also, Daryl Ray then stepped out of the end zone, walked over to the stands, and gave the football to a youngster here at Shea Stadium. Pat Leahy will be kicking off. on the return. Got a hold. To the 20. And he is up and it hit at the 21 and came down four yards later. Jesse Johnson is the man who stopped it. And it's a good thing Jesse Johnson got a shot at him because it looked like a hole was opening up. Had he gotten by Johnson, there was a lot of real estate out there. Well, we said that uh, Grogan was loosening up. Not only loosening up, but he's in there. He's ready. Mark it at the 25. Steve Grogan, now the quarterback. His first appearance. And he better hurry up because there's 16 seconds remaining on a 30-second clock. That'd be the terrible way to start to the five-yard penalty delay of the game.
Grogan to throw. Screen. Screen. Terrible pass. Had a lot of pressure. Abdul Salam had the pressure on him. Looked like he knocked his arm because that ball went sideways somehow. And if Joe Klecko had seen it, he had a chance to intercept. It's a sure pass. I'm sure that's what they're calling that play for Grogan, that he's been on the sidelines. He's going back. Calhoun, number 44, is there. Now he's going to slide over, but here it is right here. It looked like the ball was, was slapped by, or the arm was slapped by 74 Salam, but the ball just went up in the air. Not, Second and ten. Not the way Grogan wanted to start. Stands in, pass is complete. Collins. He fights his way to about the 28-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. Marty Lyons with the tackle for an update. Let's go to Brian Gumbel. Brian? Well, Charlie, down the Houston Astrodome where the Seahawks are pulling out all the stops, this little bit of trickery doesn't quite work. Jim Zorn throws it up for grabs. Mike Reinfeldt and J.C. Wilson play jump ball with it, and it winds up in the arms of Greg Bingham, but the Oilers trail by three. Charlie? Thank you, Brian. It is third down and seven here at Shea. The Jets lead by 14. And we are all still checking out that injury report on Pat Hayden in the Ram ball game. And uh, we'll either have an update on that here or Brian will have it in our studios at NFL 81. Grogan going deep to the tight end. Hasselbeck does a complete 360 and fakes the catch. Don Hasselbeck. Darrell Ray finally stopped him an outstanding reception. He'll tackle on him. Not that easy. Second and 13. Incomplete. Gaffney, the intended receiver for an update. Let's go to Bryant Gumbel. Charlie, in that Raiders-Chiefs game out at Arrowhead, there's been a score predictably enough by the Chiefs. Billy Kenny, four yards to Henry Marshall. It's 20 to nothing. Raiders now in their 11th quarter of shutout ball. Charlie? Oh, thank you, Bryant. I want to talk to you about Oakland and uh, Kansas City right after this replay. There are two or three different men around the ball carrier. And here it is coming in. Both of the uh, defenders there. But that's a, that's a ball right there that most of the time Derek Gaffney is going to come up with. Third down and 13. We'll talk about Oakland and Kansas City after the play. Dodd has pressure. And he is sacked. That is the second sack of the ball game. For the New England Patriots, Richard Bishop got this one, only their fifth on the year, and Chuck Ramsey will come in to kick. Now, let's talk about Kansas City or Oakland. Oakland still cannot generate any offense, obviously. What about Kansas City? How good are they? They got off to a great start, then they've kind of stumbled the last couple of ball games. They've had some injuries. The Chiefs have had some injuries. Art still is out. He is their all-pro defensive lineman, and he's as good as there, any, there is in the National Football League, most people feel. Their offense uh, the last year didn't do much. They're starting to come around now. Ed Buddy's son, Brad Buddy. Pretty soon they're going to be calling uh, <laughs> Ed Buddy Brad Buddy's father. But uh, the line is doing a much better job. Hey, he's really been kicking the ball. Excellent. Haynes, indecision. Oh, and he is dropped by Jesse Johnson. You've don't, got to make up your mind. Go straight ahead, get what you can, and get out of there as quickly as possible. Don't ever do that. Get as far forward as you possibly can, pick up the yardage, then worry about going sideways. A 57-yard kick by Ramsey. Your day is long, and your work is hard. And your boots say, act me. Your boots say, act me. Acme. Your boots say Acme, the real West. Hey Frank, want to wager on the race for a case of beer? Sure. What's your brand? These boats will cover 200 miles before this wager is settled, but it's worth the wait because it's for Michelob Light. That rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. You never beat us that bad before. <laughs> we never raced for a whole case of Michelob Light before. Michelob Light. Compare the taste. 
This is Brian Gumbel in New York. We just showed you Kenny Anderson completing one touchdown pass to rookie Chris Collinsworth. Here's one to another rookie, David Verse, for another touchdown for Cincy. They're out in front 17-5 at the half. Let's go back to Shea. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson. The score, the Jets 28, the Patriots 14. New England has the ball on their own 33-yard line. First down, we have 6.15. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. Jackson comes in motion. Brogan's pass is incomplete. He was going for Tony Collins out of the backfield. Put a little too hard in that distance. Is he firing it too quickly? Just okay, it was a bad play. High and behind him. Uh, looked like he made his mind up at the last uh, possible moment to get, try to get the ball through the back coming out of the backfield. But you don't. You have to throw the ball firmly, but not too hard. The object naturally is to have your man catch the football, so you don't want to try to tear his head off. But that ball was thrown bit high and behind him. You really simplify it. Get him the football. <laughs> to get him in his hands, they're supposed to catch him. Second and ten. Over the middle, a little high, and then juggle. Hasselbeck incomplete. He does like to go to his tight end. Well, he makes a great target. As tall as he is out there, and he had the one hand on it. And then once again, most of the time, he's going to come up with that football. That time he didn't. But he's six foot seven inches tall. I guess that's about his cleats on him. So. Maybe the tallest artist in the world. He's an excellent artist. A couple of one-man shows. I know the one man show he wants to put on now is to make a, a couple more receptions like he did here just a little while ago. Now the tough to do on the sidelines. Going three wide receivers right now. Third down and ten. Five men in the secondary for the Jets from the shotgun. Four man rush. And him open. It is there and it is close to the first down. Andy Johnson coming out of the backfield may have picked up the first down. It was third down and ten. Greg Buttle with the tackle. Bet you he got it. Now he is the type of back that knows exactly how far he has to go. Number 32, Andy Johnson, is quite a versatile back, and he knows how to run pass batters. He's looking for the open area, gets the ball. Now he's going to turn it upfield. Got to get it upfield because he knows he's got to get the first down. That last lunge right there got him the first down. Got it by a yard. 44 yard line, first down, gain of 11. Collins gave some ground and gave away a couple of yards. Ken Troy was there for the New York Jets. The market at the 42. It'll be second down and 12. I'm sure, that's one thing that Collins is going to learn in professional football that uh, going sideways doesn't work too often. Atlanta 28, Los Angeles 27. That's in the third quarter. And we're still we're still searching out that injury report on Pat Hayden to give you an update on that. Once again, Charlie, talking about first down plays. Second 11. Forget about the play selection. I mean, you, it's a passing situation. Pure and simple. Hasselbeck in motion behind the balloon. Trying to hide out from our cameras. Oh, a low. Stanley Morgan. Inside the 25 to the 24 yard line where Dykes makes the tackle. There was not a jet within eight yards. They spread out that jet defense that time, and the line gave Brogan an opportunity to take a look at the secondary. Now you're taking a look isolation on Stanley Morgan. See him running by the linebackers and he's finding the open spot. The linebackers are there. He stops where the open spot is, giving his quarterback a target. And as you can see, he's running for about eight or ten yards before he runs into any green shirts. Once again, Brogan, the last time they had the ball, they took it all the way down to about the three-yard line. He's got it on the move once again. But eventually, you've got to capitalize on these drives. You've got to put some points on the board. A gain of 33 yards in the play and a first down at the Jet 24. Brogan to throw, 349, Wide time open. remaining. Wide open is Harold Jackson. A flag is down as Jackson is down at the five-yard line. Two flags down, one in the backfield, one down on the five-yard line. Last two plays, he's uh, Grogan has had receivers wide. With yes. They seem to be uh, moving back toward the original line of scrimmage, indicating that it's going to go against the New England Patriots. Either that or offsetting penalties. Officials holding a conference. 
Well, the head coach of the Patriots. Offensive pass interference. The head coach of the Patriots wants an explanation, Ron Earhart. If I read the signals correctly, it was an offensive pass interference and, uh, and a holding against uh, both flags were against New England. I'm sure the men in the striped shirt will give us an explanation. Oh, yes. Jordan. Illegal use of the hands. Now let's go to Brian Gumbel. Brian? Charlie and Houston, the Oilers have taken the lead for the first time in their ball game with the Seahawks. Earl Campbell going in from a yard out. Earl already has 91 yards on the day. Oilers in front by four. Charlie? All right. Thank you, Brian. 34-yard line, first and 20. 28-14, Jets over New England now with 344 left to go. We're in the third quarter at Shea Stadium. Brogan, the quarterback, replacing Kavanaugh. Pass is on target to Ken Toller, the rookie from Mississippi. His receivers have been wide open in the deep pattern. And once again, the offensive line is providing protection for Grogan. And that's not easy because the Jets know he's going to throw the football. 82. Ken Toller running down. He's got the defensive back Dykes trailing all behind him, but trailing behind is no good because you want to be in a position where you can make a move on that receiver. He was open. Quarterback had time to throw the football, and he got the ball to him. Here again, Charlie, once again, on and right at the door of the Jets. A gain of 23 yards on the play. Play pass. Lots of time. Open. Hasselbeck, touchdown. Broken the Hasselback. 30, 67 yard drive that started at the 33 yard line in seven plays. Plenty of time to throw the football. Play action pass. Grogan going back. Getting depth. Now watch the time that he has. The important thing is he can look. Look at him looking around down there. He can see. He can see his men. He can see the defensive of players down there and he can make a good throw. Hasselbeck is open, he gets the throw. It's when you get hands up in front of your face as a quarterback and you don't know exactly where the defensive men are that you get problems. The extra point is good, the score, the New York Jets 28, the New England Patriots 21. Grogan has completed seven of 12, he has averaged 21 yards a reception. It's time to bring some sanity and reason to new car prices. For 1982, Chrysler Corporation is offering some of its most popular front-wheel drive, high-mileage cars at 1981 prices. For 82, Chrysler introduces the lowest-priced six-passenger front-wheel drive cars, America's lowest-priced five-passenger front-wheel drive cars, and the lowest-priced full-size pickup. For 82 cars at 81 prices, come to Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth. Dear Atari Anonymous, my son Boris has a missile command problem. My mission in life is to save all of mankind. Lately, my daughter has developed a similar problem with Atari Warlords. Now, with video pinball, my husband is acting funny lately. With Atari games so ingenious, so involving, so intense, I ask you, Atari Anonymous, is this problem contagious? This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, Don Hasselbeck. That is his third touchdown of the year in the ball game today. Five receptions for 97 yards and his first touchdown of the afternoon. He's made some clutch catches too, Charlie. So. Here is the kickoff and it's a good one. Better get on it. You better now. get on it. <laughs> that goes through the end zone. That is a live ball until it goes out of bounds or until it has been downed in the end zone. So the Jets will take over at the 20-yard line. They lead now by seven. They have led 7-0, tie at 7-7. The Jets have led 14-7, 21-7.
21-14, 28-14, and now 28-21. And the Jets, uh, this is no time for the Jets to play conservatively because the Patriots, they get that football, they're moving it. They didn't score the one time because uh, Rogan missed Calhoun, but they scored the last time they had the ball. And in time of possession, New England has had it offensively seven minutes more than the Jets. Todd fires, it is incomplete. He was going to Wesley Walker. Two receivers in the same neighborhood. Drawing a defensive crowd, it'll be second down and ten. Ray Claiborne was there for the Patriots. One good thing about that pass by Todd, he let it go out there that if his man was unable to catch it, no one was going to catch it. Because he does not want to turn the ball over now. And particularly does not want to turn it over that deep in his own territory. Second down and 10. 2.39 time remaining third quarter. Inside handoff to Harper. A couple of yards to the 22. It'll be third down and eight. Richard Bishop with the tackle. That may be the first time in the ballgame that play has not worked. Tom Newton comes into the offensive set. I'm thinking now they've had really one playoff. The Jets have had one play offensively, and that was uh, when Harper took off from about the three yard line up to the 30 yard line. That, and that's all they've done really offensively in this third quarter. Todd under throws Tom Newton, but Richard had pressure. As Richard Bishop was right on top of it. Now let's have an update. Let's go to Brian Gumbel. Brian? Charlie, it's going to be a long flight back to Oakland for the Raiders. Here's another Kansas City score. Kenny to J.T. Smith, the nine-yarder. It is now 27-0. The Raiders working hard in their third shutout. Charlie? All right, thank you, Brian. Chuck Ramsey will be kicking. He has been averaging in this game 50.5 yards. His counterpart, Ken Hartley, just over 26-yard average. Mike Haynes set for the return. Another good one. It's about time for him to go straight ahead instead of sideways, too. From the 26 to the 30, and then out of bounds around the 32-yard line as Ken Troy was chasing him. 54 yards on the kick by Ramsey. He is punting exceptionally well today. So New England will start from their own 32-yard line, first down. The third series for Steve Grogan. And he has been able to move the Patriots. Coming up next, the fifth and deciding game in the National League Division Series, the Houston Astros against the Dodgers or the Montreal Expos against the Philadelphia Phillies. That's coming up next on NBC at 4 o'clock Eastern time or right after the ball game. New England now from the 32. Down by seven, Hasselbeck in motion. Brogan is sacked. That is sack number five for the Jets. Gastineau got this one. Salam and Klecko had a piece of the action. Steady also. pressure by that entire defensive front four of the Jets. They just converged right straight back to where Grogan was located. And it wasn't just one man. It was three and four of those defensive linemen getting pressure. That's when it's tough for a quarterback because there's nowhere to go. You can't. There's nowhere to see. You can't throw the ball because you don't. You can't locate the defensive players. You can't jump outside because there's pressure there. You can't jump up the middle because there's pressure there. So you lay down and say, <laughs> and I hope the next down we do better. New England's quarterbacks have lost 41 yards. Screen. And here's another. Joe Klecko read that screen really well. That is the sixth sack for the Jets. Look at Castano. Gastineau's fired up, Charlie, but the reason he was able to get back there was because Joe Klecko read the screen. He didn't take the bait of going after the, uh, the quarterback. As you can see right now, Grogan wants to throw it, but the man that was standing out there was 73, Joe Klecko. And the rumor has it that he's got pretty good hands, so he didn't want to throw it to him. The line of scrimmage now the nine-yard line. It is third down and forever for the <laughs> New England Patriots. To get up and run, Harold too. Jackson. 
the 45-yard line, and that will be a first down. Well, the forever was found, Charlie, <laughs> because he went right by two defensive Ooh. men out there, and there must be a miscoverage. Here it is. Harold Jackson's been doing this for many, many years. He goes by one man. Somebody's supposed to be deep outside, and there isn't anybody deep outside. Now, he could get up and run. Nobody's touched him so far. He could have gotten up and run. That is the end of the third quarter with the score, the Jets 28, New England 21. We'll be right back. Supposed to be somebody deep outside. And you see Jackson just running straight down the sidelines. 47 is Holmes. 48 is Roy, but somebody was supposed to be deep outside. That was a zone defense. And what they were doing, they were looking at Grogan, and somebody forgot to get deep outside where they belong. At the 45 yard line, New England Territory, they have a first down. Grogan has completed 8 of 13, 184 yards, averaging 23 yards per catch. Here's another one Jackson, close to 10 yards, as Harold Jackson pulls it down. In time of possession, New England has had the ball 26 minutes. The Jets almost 19. It's a seven-minute difference, and the Jets' defense is beginning to drag just a bit. What we're looking at out here now is number 80, Hasselbeck, the tight end, is in motion, which means that they are, maybe they'll run a draw play or try to run a screen, but basically they are out there to throw the football. They're spreading out the Jets' defense as much as they possibly can and looking for holes in that defense. Now, it's second and one. Hasselbeck is in tight now. They probably may run to pick up the first down. Yes. And they have it with about five yards to spare. Tony Collins has the first down. 39-yard line of New York. The Jets' defense is not stopping. One other thing on first downs. Remember how first half, particularly New England, was averaging under two yards yes. of first down play, including the first half. They're now up to averaging over three yards on first down because of the big surge they've had on first down play since Grogan has come in. He's in there primarily. They're behind. He's in there to throw the football, and he's doing it very successfully. First down, New York 39-yard line. The margin seven points. New England trails 28-21. Yes, there sir. he is. Tight end is open. Hasselback has it at the 10. And then is tripped up and will... Hit the turf at about the three. Ken Troy saved the touchdown. 36 yards on the play. Grogan is just chopping up the secondary of the Jets. He's getting good protection. Look at the blocking up front by, by the, uh, the Patriots. He's able to see. Hasselbeck is a big target. He is wide open. Troy is trailing him by about two or three steps. He does lunge and makes the, the uh, touchdown saving tackle. But they're still in deep trouble because they're inside the five yard line right now. And you must consider that for the Patriots, they actually have four shots to get into the end zone. The last time they were down there, they took four attempts. Grogan missing Calhoun on a fourth down play. And Grogan, in just over a quarter of action, has already thrown for more than 200 yards. a yard. It'll be second down, still goal to go. Now about the two-yard line. Grogan has completed 10 of 15 for 231 yards. They've got their short yardage team in there right now. Pete Brock, the center, is not in there. He's playing the tight end position for blocking purposes. Bill Lenkaitis is number 67. He's He is the center at the present time. But I'm sure that Ron Earhart is saying we've got four shots to get into the end zone. We're at the two-yard line now. We've got three shots. Let's get it in there. And Dawson is also in as a tight end to block. They'll lose the yard. Maybe two. Stan Blinka makes the tackle on Tony Collins. It'll be third down and goal to go at the four-yard line. Credit those linebackers, the New York Jets. They got great penetration. They were about two yards deep. Now they're putting him in a position right now from the four-yard line, losing a couple of yards. This is a passing situation now for the Patriots. And as you can see, Harold Jackson's coming into the ball game. Stanley Morgan also going into the ball game. The Jets will counteract that with their defensive backs coming into the game, taking out a linebacker. Third down goal to go, four-yard line. At the corner, incomplete. Morgan, the intended receiver, dikes with the coverage. 
It was first and goal at the three. It is now fourth and goal at the four. And they're going with a field goal attempt. But remember the holder is number 12 quarterback Matt Cavanaugh. The way they're moving that football they're down by seven points. Three points is good right now. Because I'm sure that they feel now the offensively that they can move that ball on the New York Jets. They've certainly indicated the second half since Drew Brogan has gone into the ball game. From the 12 an attempt of 22 yards. It is good from 22 yards out. So the margin has been cut to four points. It is 28 for New York, 24 for by John Smith with Sohn and now Harper deep, and Bruce Harper takes it two yards deep in the end zone. Bruce to the 10, 15. Scramble for the football as it was jarred loose. It is in New England. The Patriots recover the fumble. New England has the football inside the New York 15 yard line. Tatupo really nailed him. The ball is flying loose. One of the Jets had an opportunity to recover it. And now the officials have changed their decision. John Woodring comes up with a recovery and the Jets have the ball at the 14. First at 10 New York leading by 4 28 24 just under 11 minutes left to go lots of time remaining Kevin Long things change haven't they they really have momentum has changed You're looking at the Jets so far in the second half they have 44 yards in total offense and bear in mind 27 of those yards happened to come when uh, Harper ran from the three yard line to the 30 yard line. Other than that they really haven't done anything. We have a, uh, a Patriot on the field. Roland James injured on the play. A gain of three. It'll be second down and seven when play resumes. Clock is stopped with 10 33 left to go in the ball game. The Jets leading by 4 28 24 seeming just to be hanging on right now. You know the Jets you talked to Ron Earhart and he was saying what we want to do is keep our defense off the field because the Jets are so explosive. And that's what they've been doing. It's turned right around. <laughs> yes. All right we'll take a timeout. Jets 28 Patriots 24. We'll be back in a moment. Senior yard line. Lamb Jones going in motion. Knocked away. Good defensive play. Mike Haynes closed on Wesley Walker who had a step on it. Now let's go to Byron Day in New York City. That's where we are for an update. Byron. OK Charlie thank you very much. Following that Bradshaw pass to Swan Trout converts from 23 yards out for a field goal. The Steelers now on top 13 to 7 in the fourth quarter. Charlie. All right. Thanks for the update. Well that was six points that was saved. If Todd got that one out to yes. Wesley Walker you could just register six points on the board because he did have a step on uh, on Mike Haynes. Todd has pressure. Rolls right. Now he's got time. Now he can see and now he's back. You lose seven. Ray Hamilton got him. That is the third sack for the New England Patriots. They now have six on the year. The tide is turning. Yes, it is. It certainly is because the Jets' defense has not been able to stop the Patriot offense since Brogan came into the ball game. And for the Jet offensively, uh, Jets offensively, they have not done anything other than that one run by Bruce Harper. Dodd, 15 of 24, 163 yards. Growing for three touchdowns. Ramsey's kicked very well. He's going to be called yeah. on to do it once again. He's backed up in his end zone. He's been averaging over 50 yards on the day. It is high, but it's not that far. Taken to the 49 yard line by Mike Haynes. Haynes gives ground and he will lose about seven yards on the return. Oh. 
Guy Bingham makes the tackle. Just over nine and a half minutes left to go. A 38-yard kick. The Jets lead by four and we'll be back. Team in the National League Division Series. Stay with us today. It'll be Houston at Los Angeles or Montreal against the Phillies. That is next on NBC right after our ball game here. This is it, right, for, for baseball. That's right. There's no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> for the winner, there's a lot of tomorrows the way the season is this year. All right, New England trailing 28-24. From their own 43-yard line, they send the tight end Hassel back in motion. Grogan has pressure, scrambles, and he is sacked. Gastineau got him. And for Gastineau, that is his second sack in the seventh of the ball game for the New York Jets, who now have 24 sacks this year. They, they do play with emotion. <laughs> Grogan going back in the pocket. You can see that pressure is coming from all sides. Top of your screen is... Gastineau finally, or that's Klecko, finally sets his man. Gastineau gets in, makes the stop, and look at what I'm talking about right now, 99. They do play with emotion. New England has lost 62 yards attempting to throw the seven sacks. Pass is complete to Hasselbeck, the tight end. It was second and 17. He got seven of them back, so it'll be third down and 10. Johnny Lynn with a tackle. Lynn Dawson comes in as the second tight end. No, he'll be the tight end. Hasselbeck comes out. Third down and 10. We mentioned the 24 sacks of the Jets. Well, all of last year, they only had 28. Hasselbeck coming out. Seven receptions, 140 yards for Don Hasselbeck. Well, you can forget about that old saying that a tight end is nothing more than a big blocking offensive tackle. Not anymore. Oh, has he got heat coming at him? Deep into coverage. It is intercepted. Ken Troy has the interception. A beautiful defensive play for Troy. Listen to the crowd. Just mentioned something about 24 sacks already. And here you're taking a look at the secondary. Look how deep they are. Troy is there all the way. He's got his eye on that ball all the way. Makes a fine interception. And there's a reason that the interception took place, I feel, is because of the pressure on Grogan. He had to get rid of the football. He had to get rid of it sooner than he wanted to. Troy making the interception and sees a lot of white shirts around, so he wisely goes down. A 12-yard return to the New York 42-yard line. Bruce Harper goes inside, pops it to the 50. May have the first down right at the marker. He picks up close to 10. They ought to run that play a lot more because I've seen it three times, and three times he's picked up excellent yardage. Perhaps it's because he isn't real large in stature. I'm talking about Bruce Harper. 5'8", 177. 177 pounds. You wouldn't think of him running inside, but... Uh, you give him a little space in there, and he's through that space in a hurry. Tim Fox and Mike Ains on the tackle. Harper now six carries, 71 yards. Well, I had said at the pregame show they don't want to run him 25 and 30 times a ball game. Of course, they don't have to. If he averages as much as he is on six carries, six carries, 71 yards, you don't have to carry it 25 times. They have the first down at the New England 48-yard line. Seven minutes, 48 seconds left to go in the game. Lamb Jones comes in motion. Ball carriers, Augustiniak. And he's got a first down. He picks up 11. Back-to-back -back first downs on the ground for the Jets. Bill Matthews and Rick Sanford with a tackle. And Alexander, offensive guard out in front, blocking on that play. And that's what the Jets want to do. You're looking at the clock now, 7.25 and counting down in this football game. They want to get a couple of first downs, maintain possession of that football, and keep it away from Grogan and company. A gain of 12 yards by Augustiniak. Gaffney's in the slot on the near side. Augustiniak. Flag is down. If you got any yardage, it was about a foot, and that would be it. Bill Matthews with the tackle. 
that time the Patriots had their linebackers up tight. It was a first down situation. They figured they were going to run. They didn't did not want them to pick up any yardage. Bruce Harper 71 yards rushing the most that he has ever picked up on the ground in a ball game. Got a face mask against New England. New England Patriots. And that will be added to the end of the play. And carries with it. An automatic first down. That's one of those. Personal foul, face mask, defense, first down. That's one of those plays that are unfortunate. You never intend to do that because they had that ball carrier surrounded. He wasn't going to go anywhere. It's just in a matter of making the tackle. He did grab his face mask. But Line of scrimmage the 31. That's a good break for the Jets. Todd wants to go deep. Now that's a scramble and he'll be chased. Picks up a block. He'll head for the sidelines and out of bounds. He goes out at the 27 yard line so he picks up four. It'll be second down and six and Julius Adams was chasing him. Well he was looking downfield for his receivers. They weren't they weren't there. They were covered. Lamb Jones was one of the men that he was looking for. Take a look at Lamb Jones right here. Number 80. It's a play action pass. And he's looking to run the corner pattern and now to the post. He's made up his mind a couple of times. But he was well covered out there by number 40 Mike Haynes. That's one of the reasons Mike Haynes is one of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League. He didn't go for that one little fake that Lamb Jones gave him. Second and six. Gaffney in motion. The draw, Augustiniak. He'll pick up a couple of yards, so it'll be third down and four as Richard Bishop was not fooled and makes the tackle. Don't forget baseball coming up next. It'll be the fifth and deciding game between Houston and Los Angeles and the fifth and the deciding game between Montreal and Philadelphia. So you'll be seeing one but probably both because we'll be switching back and forth between Philadelphia and Los Angeles completing our coverage of this particular series as we look now to the clock and the time remaining here at Shea Stadium as Bruce Harper and Tom Newton are in the backfield at third down and four. And for the Patriots an additional down lineman going after the passer. Incomplete. Going to Bruce Harper, it will be fourth down and four. And Pat Leahy will come in with a field goal attempt. Roland James and Rod Schota, the defensive coverage. Kansas City, 27 to nothing, a final score for the Oakland Raiders. They have been shut out, zero, three games well, four. in a row. And for Kansas City, uh, they had had some problems defensively, but not near the amount of problems that the Oakland Raiders are having on offense. Bill Kenny, a couple of touchdown passes in that ball game. 43 yard attempt is no good by Leahy. So Leahy now has missed twice in the ball game in the last play of the first half from 50, and he misses now from 43 yards away with six minutes to go in the ball game. Not Which too. Means that New England takes over the line of scrimmage. Not, not the. <laughs> This is an important field goal to be made because they're only up by four points. You can always look at the kicker and tell tell what happened. Now he's trying to help it a little bit, but you know what happened with with the reaction of the kicker Leahy. Now I was talking about Kansas City. Can you imagine the world champion Oakland Raiders being shut out three weeks in a row? Not one point in three weeks. It's mind-boggling. Yes, it is. But Mr. Grogan has his problem right now. They have some points, but not nearly enough. They're four short right now. Drop at the 41-yard line. Stanley Morgan, a catchable pass. It'll be second and ten. The line of scrimmage at 25. Klecko was putting the pressure on Grogan. That was a good good pass by Steve Grogan. He had to get rid of the ball in a hurry, but he hit him right in the hand. I guess that's a bad spot. <laughs> Number 80 is in there. He's uh, he's been the main man for uh, New England today. Hasselbeck, what 140 yards uh, in receptions? He had, I think about seven receptions for about 140 yards. Somewhere in that neighborhood. We'll double check Hasselbeck's uh, official totals. 
They need 10 more <laughs> right now. A little mix up. Now that was the Tupu was just a delay on the draw. Yes. The Tupu started, stopped, and started again. Was that it? Klecko makes the tackle. Well, you have to do that every once in a while. I mean, every time you go back in the in the shotgun, you can't always throw the football. You have to at least give uh, the defense something to think about. Yeah, seven passes for 140 yards for Don Hasselbeck. When you look at the clock, 5.20 remaining in this football game. For the Patriots, it's getting pretty close to a crucial situation. Third down and seven. He's there, and he's open, and it's incomplete. Morgan was in the clear. Grogan hung the ball just a bit, and Darrell Ray got to Morgan the same time as the football got there. Gastineau was putting the pressure. Here's another look. Talking about split-second timing in, in passing. Now, this ball is going to get to Stanley Morgan just as number 28 defensive back Darrell Ray gets to him. Had the ball been there just well, one of the reasons because of the hit that he took. Now, watch this. The ball is there, and bang, he bobbles it just a little bit. Darrell Ray hits him, and it's an incompleted pass. The kick by Hartley. That's his best of the day. Taken at the 31-yard line by Schoen. And he has around six yards on the return. Zamberlin makes the tackle for New England. We have four minutes and 58 seconds left to go in the game. The Jets lead by four, and New York has the football. We'll be back to Shea Stadium in a moment. We have 4.58 left to go in the game. The Jets lead by four, 28-24. New York has the football on their own 37-yard line with Augustiniak and Kevin Long in the backfield. Kevin Long. Three yards to the 40. It'll be second down and seven as Bob Golick makes the tackle. Stay with us throughout the end of this game. There's no telling what may happen. And stay with us for the baseball. A lot of exciting sports for you today. Right now, Charlie, what's happening is the Jets want to make a couple of first downs. That's obvious. Run out the clock. It's 430 and counting down right now. The Patriots know this also. So you're going to see a lot of people up near that line of scrimmage. Todd overthrows everybody as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC TV, New York. And for those of you that just joined us looking for the baseball game, well, we'll have it for you. Either Houston at Los Angeles or Montreal against Philadelphia, as we will have the deciding game between uh, both of those ball, uh, four of those ball clubs. And it will be on NBC right after our coverage here today from Shea Stadium as the Jets are in front of New England by four, 28 to 24, 413 left to go. Third down and seven. Todd has now missed his last six passes in a row. Didn't, does not miss this one. Big first down. Well, he fired that ball. He rifled it. Hit him right in the stomach. Going to his tight end, Jerome Barkham, on the receiving end of two touchdown passes. Claiborne and Schott with the tackle. Now you can see they're happy because this is a big first down. The pressure is coming. Good blocking by the uh, the offensive line, and he really fires this ball and hits Barkham right in the stomach. And he, you can see where the yard markers are located. He's a seasoned veteran. He knows that he has to get at least beyond that yard mark in case he has to come back for the football because they needed that first down. A gain of 19 on the play. New England 41 yard line, Bruce Harper. Well, that play finally did not work. <laughs> That's right. He'll lose a yard, maybe two. Golick and, and Hawkins were there. And the reason being is that the Patriots must stop them on first down. They must put them in a passing situation like they did the last time. So I think that if the Jets were going to take a chance at any time, that was the down to do it. Almost three seconds, or rather three minutes left to go in the game here. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, Shea Stadium, the Jets leading New England 28-24. Richard Todd swings it out, and it is incomplete to Mike Augustiniak. At halftime, the Jets led 
21 14. At the end of the third, the Jets led 28 21 and now it's 28 24. Check of the finals Philadelphia over New Orleans 31 14. And don't forget, we have a lot of baseball remaining for you today, but a lot of football remaining here. The way Steve Grogan has been moving that, that ball when the Patriots have had it, uh, the Jets definitely would like to come up with another first down. New England 42, it's third down and 11. Lamb Jones, Bobby Jones, and Wesley Walker, three wide receivers in the game. Jones the intended receiver and Keith Lee made the coverage for the New England Patriots. Keith Lee didn't know, have any idea where that football was coming from either Charlie because you can take a look at number 22 is Keith Lee. Now his back is falls down his back is is to the receiver and he's running and it's almost almost face guard but not quite not quite. Face guarding, you really have to get that hand up in front of the face. He was just struggling to hold, to get his footing back. That's First of all. all, he had to get up off the ground. Here is Chuck Ramsey to kick. Mike Haynes is set for a possible return. Going for the corner. They know that they're going to have to throw, and they're going after Grogan. 2:35 left to go. Calhoun out of the backfield. Calhoun should have tried to find the sidelines. I don't know why he was going up the middle of the field because. The clock is what they're fighting right now. 2.22 and counting down. Should have got what he, what he could get and jump out of bounds. A gain of about eight yards on the play. Second down and a couple. Greg Buttle with the last tackle. Groger to throw. Pass is complete to Collins and he is dropped by Buttle. He caught it at the 25. And that will be a first down as we come to the two minute warning and now here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Alcoa presents fantastic finishes. 1970 Tom Dempsey will try to do the impossible kick a 63 yard field goal. Joe Scarpatti gets the ball down. Dempsey caught it solid and it's it's good. Tom Dempsey has just kicked a 63 yard field goal with no time left on the clock. The Saints beat the Lions 19 to 17. We're going to keep moving, moving on today. We can't afford to hesitate. Come on along, participate. Can't wait for tomorrow. Executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Omeyer. The coordinating producer of NFL football is Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast was produced by Kenneth Edmondson and still is. It is being directed by Andy Rosenberg. Skip Gresh is our technical director. And Mike Heilbaum is our associate director. Two minutes to go. Grogan has completed 13 of 22 for 248 yards. He did not start the ball game. came in in the third quarter. Matt Cavanaugh, the starting quarterback. Now let's see what Steve Grogan can do with two minutes left. Both New England and the Jets have three timeouts remaining. Pass was low, but it was caught. Maybe a first down. Lance Mel was there for the defense. Tony Collins. No, it wasn't. It was Andy Johnson that scooped it up. At the 35, first down. This one was dropped. Stanley Morgan. Stanley Morgan is not having a good day. He has dropped at least three passes today. And of all the time to drop a pass, that was not it because you're fighting everything right now. That was a good pass by Steve Grogan. That would have been great. They'd have been up around midfield. They would have exercised one of their timeouts. They still have three remaining. 136 left. Second and 10 at the 35 yard line. Ben Rudolph replaces Abdul Salam defensively. Andy Johnson, Mosi Tatupu in the backfield with Jackson and Morgan, the wide receivers. Hasselbeck, the tight end. 
Here we're set to go. 136 left. New England trails by four. This pass is caught at the 40 yard line. Tatupa with a diving reception. Greg Buttle downs him at the 40, a gain of five. It's now third down and five, 122 and counting. They did not exercise a timeout. It's 117 and counting down. Lots of time and then sack. The eighth sack for the Jets. Rudolph and Lyons split this one between them. Should have taken the timeout and regroup. I surely would have taken timeout. Of course, that's going to be debated. Now he has to take a timeout, but they needed five yards for a first down, and they had three timeouts remaining. Go back to that pass that Stanley Morgan dropped. They would have been at midfield with a first down situation. And now it is fourth and 15 at the 30. That's going to be debated. I personally would have called a timeout with third and five because. Uh, Something like that can happen. Everybody's hurrying there. You could have had an offside penalty. Take your time out. Go back and say, hey, we need a first down. We got two downs to do it. Here are the two plays. All right, we'll be back in just a moment to Shea Stadium with 110 left to go. There's a hungry kind of feeling, and every day it grows. You know there's so much more to you than anybody knows. Specialist Kevin Crowley is working with tomorrow's technology in the Army's newest tank. The laser determines target range and feeds it to the computer. It's just incredible. Makes the tackle. Six men in the secondary. Patriots take a timeout with one minute. That was fourth and 50. Charlie, I got to give a lot of people a lot of credit. Ooh. Stanley Morgan dropped about three passes that he he should have had during the course of this ball game. But they have that much confidence in him, and I'm sure he has that much confidence in himself. That they came right back to him. It was an excellent throw by Grogan and they hit him right in the middle between all those defensive men coming up with the big first down something they had to have if they hadn't gotten that one in all probability the game would have been over for the Patriots but still there are four points down they can't work for a field goal situation they've got to get a touchdown they now have one timeout remaining it was fourth and 15. The play covered 26 yards to the New York 44-yard line. New England now with one timeout left. The Jets have three. New York 28. New England 24. Grogan has completed 16 of 26 for 289 yards. Did not come in the ball game until the third quarter. Walt Michaels, the head coach of the New York Jets. He's in his defensive stance. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm taking a look at that Patriot offense. They're spreading out that defense. Sideline pass is complete and out of bounds. Andy Johnson. That stops the clock with 54 seconds left. Jerry Holmes was there for New York. What the Jets are doing, they're conceding the shorter pass, and Andy Johnson is in the ballgame right now because he's an outstanding pass receiver, and he's a very knowledgeable one. Playing, or have, having played quarterback in college, he understands the problems of the quarterback. It'll be second and about a yard and a half. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, with 54 seconds left to go at Shea Stadium. 
Jets leading by four. The Patriots at the New York 35 yard line. Brogan far side. It is caught and out of bounds, stopping the clock close to the 13 yard line. Did I say that Andy he was, Johnson did again? I say he was good. Yes. That was an outstanding reception. And what happened was the linebacker had his back to Grogan, so he couldn't see the ball. The only one that could really follow it was number 32, Andy Johnson. Now is the time for cool hits. 27 to 26, counting down. A gain of 22 yards, 13-yard line of New York. Grogan is over 300 yards in less than a half. 18 of 28 for 320 yards. Ron Crosby has come in. They thought that the boat, they thought he was out of bounds. 45 seconds left on go. the clock. There you go. We will reset the clock. That's the call. He was out of bounds at the 45 second mark, stopping the clock. They'll reset the clock. Well, right. Somebody forgot here in New York to stop the <laughs> clock when they were out of bounds. Andy Johnson. He was a running quarterback at Georgia. He's a receiver here. He could also throw the ball. He's four for four for two touchdowns. Good pass protection. You can see the linebacker did not see the ball because that's Mel, 56. Johnson did made a fine re, uh, reception. Gets out of bounds. 45 seconds remaining, and they're on the 18. Or no, they're on the 13-yard 13 13. line right now. And they have one timeout remaining in this game. They have a lot of time to get the job done with 45 seconds. New England still with the timeout remaining. The Jets have three. And they're setting the clock. And they, they start from there. It's going to take forever to set it. <laughs> they really don't have to throw it into the end zone because of the timeout remaining. That's they do correct. have. Here's the choice. conference on the sideline. Twenty eight twenty four the Jets leading by four. The Jets have not trailed in this game. Although they were tied at 7-7. It could be the fact that they've got to reset that clock might help the Jets because the Patriots were really hot there in the last few few, uh, few plays. And don't forget baseball right after this game. The deciding game, the National League Division Series, the Astros against the Dodgers, the Expos against the Phillies. And we'll be switching back and forth between those two ball games, catching all of the action. The clock is now stopped at 1342. So they, what the officials can do is go ahead and keep the remaining 45 seconds on the field to get this game moving on. There's no sense of taking this kind of a delay because the way the clock is now, well, maybe they can pick it up. Let's see what they do. But now we're playing a little of what we call stand around. And what the Jets have to do, they've got to really put some heat on Grogan. He has had time to take a look and survey the secondary the last couple of times and he got the football to his man. The best pass defense there is is getting to that man Steve Grogan. You, you saw a shot of John Smith losing up that's for an extra point attempt. Field goal does not help New England at this point. Of course the Jets have a problem with Grogan because he's he's an outstanding runner. If you put if you put the blitz on him and he escapes he has the ability to get in himself. And I believe the officials would go ahead and keep the time on the field. There is a clock, a clock malfunction. There's 45 seconds left to play in the game. We will keep it on the field. All right, the line is coming to 13. It's first down. Decision from the referee Tom Dewey. And we're back to play. And I look for Grogan to keep one of his backs in there to help him block. And he is. Incomplete six yard line. Andy Johnson, the intended receiver. Approximately. 40 seconds. Those plays normally take around five seconds. I was mentioning that Grogan 
kept a back end to help him block, and I'm sure that's what he'll do as a, one of his protectors back there in case somebody misses misses the block. He's got somebody back there to to help clean up, so at least he can get rid of the football. Second and ten, 13 yard line. About 40 seconds remaining. Is complete and out of bounds. Jackson got it. Troy was there for the defense. Clock is stopped with about 35 seconds remaining. He went out of bounds right at the marker. It will be first and goal to go. A lot of options now. Remember, he has one timeout left in this in the ball game. He does not have to throw the football. Jackson six receptions 101 yards on the year averaging over 21 yards a catch first down goal to go about 35 seconds left three yard line. Oh he's got a man open he's and he overthrows it. It'll be second. Stay with us for our baseball coverage of the National League Division Series. The Dodgers and the Astros they're tied at two apiece. Expos and Phillies, they're tied at two of these. Andy Johnson's in the ball game, and he's an excellent receiver. He made a couple of nice catches here earlier. Now, I'm sure what they would like to do, if they could, is isolate Andy Johnson on a linebacker and get a step on him and let Grogan get him the football. And we have movement before the snap by the offense. That will bring it out to the eight yard line. Doesn't really make that much difference except for the fact they could have run the football when they were down that close and utilized their timeout. We have received official information 27 seconds left. That is unofficial 27 seconds. Our unofficial 30 was close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Too much time. 14 of the offense, second down. Second down, goal to go. Rogan has pressure, he's sacked. He'll have to take the timeout. Klecko got it. Klecko has four and a half sacks. Nine sacks for the Jets. Marty Lyons, let's give Marty half a sack on that. I do believe I said the best pass defense Ooh, yes. is getting to the quarterback. And a flag is dropped back at the one-yard line. Here you're taking a look at Grogan. He's getting the heat. Klecko 73 is there. Are they calling are they calling defensive holding? I believe they are, and that'll make an automatic first down. All defensive fouls with five exceptions, automatic first down. Offsides, encroachment, delay of game, illegal substitution, excessive timeouts are not first downs for the defense. Plus, Any other defensive foul is. Plus the fact they still have a timeout left. Yes, you're right. Four yard line. Holding 29 defense, it's first down. And that's what really hurts because you get to the quarterback and it wasn't necessary to hold. Of course, that's an afterthought. You know what? It would be a good play right here. The Grogan, Quarterback draw? Yeah, well, he. I, I, I don't know how uh, solid Grogan is and how his health is. But. Uh, Four yard line, first and goal. He's throwing it away, stops the clock. Good play. About 17 seconds left. It'll be second down, goal to go. There's a flag drop. That pass was intended for the first row of the <laughs> stands. That was simply to stop the clock. It's against the Patriots. Offensive pass interference. You don't think they'd be utilizing the old pick play, do you? Could be. I know they tried it. It looked like that they were trying it when he threw the ball to Carol uh, Jackson here not too long ago. Of 
offensive pass interference on Stanley Morgan. Down goes over. 17 seconds left. First down goal to go. 14 yard line. 28 24 New England trailing by four. Well if people like excitement they got to love this football game because it's going right down to the, to the last second. Hasselbeck. Next time. It's intercepted to the depth. That should wrap it up. Daryl Ray has his third interception of the ball game. And he is tripped up at the 36-yard line by Steve Grogan. have left the field as time runs out was it Johnny Lynn number 29 we thought it was Daryl Ray number 28 a 57 yard return here it is here is the ball game Grogan going over to his left side under thrown he was going for Jackson 29 Johnny, Johnny Lynn. Lynn intercepts and the game is over the Jets win it Here's to meeting new faces in new places.